and he's third. And over the line to take victory. Fantastic. What a race.
space. It's the hardest team competition. Seven laps ahead of us, two stops required. Which manufacturer it will be? The drivers here are the best in the world. Strategy is crucial to win. BMW lead the way here for the manufacturer's world final. There's more pressure because your teammates are counting on you. This is the manufacturer series. And Toyota have this long, long straight. Can they take the lead? One mistake and your race could be over. Oh, oh, man. For contact from another driver and you are out. Right hand will be now full. Oh, oh, BMW, oh, and they're oh, off and oh, the BMW oh, go from first at the start of the race all the way down to 16th. So the key is to know when to overtake. Nico's going to go round the outside. Oh, my goodness. How has he managed that? And know how to defend your position. Let's just keep it, can it keep it? It goes round the outside of T1 and takes back the lead. If you know this, you can shine on the most demanding stage. Can this and do this? Can they get into second? There's a Porsche in front. They're going to be free white. This and Porsche out of has run out of fuel. Second seat for Lexus. And we have my A, GT World Final Champion. Temporada 2019 que comienza Serie de Fabricantes es lo que vamos a ver hoy. Soy MC Epsilon, para mí es un placer estar aquí con todos ustedes y a mi lado el grandísimo Lucas Ordoñez. Un mono me con Sal Gomes y estoy con U. Francisco Mel. Ciao a tutti, yo soy Andrea Facchinetti. Y yo soy Emilio Cozzi. Estamos prontos para partir con estas nuevas emociones y grandes gare. Para nosotros es Giorgio, entonces. Gracias mil, Italia. Eh, bah, moi, c'est Donald Renew. Et toi, c'est Fabien Taraxi. Comment oui, ça va? Ça va super bien. On est ici pour la Manufacturer's Cup à Paris. Donc, forcément, ça va super bien. Florian, à toi de jouer. Merci. Hallo, auch von uns. Ich bin Florian Strauss. Ich bin der Michel Wolk. Fun Action auf jeden Fall. Und wir gehen wieder ab zu Jimmy und Tom. Hello and welcome to the English commentary position here in Paris. My name is Tom Brooks. And my name is Jimmy Robert. And now that we've heard from our entire commentary team, let's head over to our host, Julia Harley. Hello and welcome to the 2019 FIA certified Gran Turismo World Championships coming to you live from Paris. Now, if you missed the 2018 season, what a season you missed. But 2019 is lined up to be even bigger, badder and better. 
we are traveling all across the globe to find the best drivers in Gran Turismo. It's going to be terribly exciting. I'm very, very happy to be back here and happy to be in Paris. It's the first stop on our world tour. Now, today has got a little bit of an overview. Let's take a look at the schedule of uh, how everything's going to work out. So, yes, this is the Manufacturer Series. How this is going to work is it's going to be three races, uh, race one, race two, race three, and then the final race. And how the structure kind of works of the actual competition, let's take a look at a graphic and I can talk you through it. So, OK, you've got 12 teams of three drivers. Each of the qualifiers will be a time attack qualifier with a nominated driver. So each of these, uh, then it go, then goes to the three races with cumulative points and uh, one driver per race. Then the final race, which is double the points, and it has all three drivers and all three tyre strategies. Then all of those points jumbled together will add up and uh, you have your winning team. So yes, it's... Um, it's going to be a pretty exciting day. There's, um, it's been a lot of high pressure, mainly because uh, a lot of these, uh, because there was a nominated driver basically in these manufacturer series. You know, getting this kind of top six position means a lot because it's not just about you know being the best for yourself. You're also letting your team down if you haven't made it through, which is a little bit tricky. So why don't we take a look at the top six standings as we go into this qualifier race? So. Okay, so we have uh, Rubelart at the top there with the fastest time for BMW. BMW last year were knock out, knocked out kind of fairly early on-ish. Uh, we, uh, we also have um, Igor, Fra Igor Fraga. Obviously, he was the winner of the uh, Nations Cup uh, before. And um, we have Lexus as well, who are in ninth, which uh, was a bit surprising because last year they did, in fact, win it. So... Uh, as I was saying, basically, you know, getting this kind of into this top six uh, qualifiers is uh, terribly important. Uh, as you can see from this video we put together of the heavy actions. Oh, <laughs> we did top six. We did top six. <laughs> yeah, we did top six, mate. <laughs> that was nice, man. Nice. I hope it's enough. I hope. Yes, yes, yeah, man, yes, yes! <laughs> you are awesome, man, you are awesome! <laughs> we did it, I can't believe it, wow. <laughs> okay, honestly, this entire weekend is all about uh, team and driver radio. I just want some, like, full-on montages of everything, because that is spectacular. You can see how much it means to these guys because it is all about team. And speaking of teams, they have been chatting online, so we've actually taken a quick look at what some of them have to say. So we've got Team Subaru there, um, presenting a very united front. Uh, there's been a whole host of tweets from all of the, the teams uh, before the weekend and across the weekend. And, uh, but, I mean, it's one thing, you know, to kind of see what they're kind of talking about, but actually, what we really want to know is what you think. So we have a question to pose to you. So. You know, taking into account like the cars within each uh, manufacturer class, which squad would you like to join? That's which manufacturer's team would you like to hop on and why? Tweet us using the hashtag FIA GTC or GT Sport. Let us know. But now, enough of all that. Let's kick it over to the top six qualifiers and my weekend wingmen, the lads at the desk, Tom and Jimmy. Thank you very much indeed, Julia. Yeah, welcome back over to the English commentary position. My name's Tom Brooks. This is Jimmy Broadbent alongside me. And Jimmy, as Julia was highlighting yesterday, we had the overall qualifier. So the drivers in the teams who finished from seventh position down to 12th, they're locked in for their grid positions. Now we've got the top six qualifier ahead at the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. That's right. So the best from yesterday are going to be uh, putting their best on the table and trying to qualify in the top six for this, uh, this qualifying session coming up. I want to say very quickly, it's very nice to be back at this desk. It's nice to be at the booth, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly <laughs> is. Let's have a look, though, at this Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. So you can see race one is going to be a five-lap race. Group three machines, equivalent to the FIA GT3 class. Racing hard tyres, 16 times tyre wear, four times fuel consumption no pit stops though a plan for this one we've got a rolling start we've got a real uh, slipstream as well and as you can see there the penalty line on that graphic on the left hand side of your screen is going out of turn eight and going down towards turn number nine so a very crucial part of the lap one of the few straights actually on this brands hatch circuit it's going to be pretty interesting to see how these drivers fare they're very difficult to overtake here as well and you really overtake down at druid which is a very difficult corner to get this the run on but uh, anyway let's forget all that and get over to the qualifying session top six qualifiers coming right up 
So then, a qualifying session, just five minutes for these drivers to decide which team will line up where on the grid. Six teams partaking, and that will be the first six positions on the grid by the time this qualifying session does get completed. You can see BMW here. Now, they were very, very handy yesterday. They've got Nicolas Rubilar, who is the man behind the wheel at the moment. And Rubilar, of course, the Chilean driver, very, very quick on his day. Bit of an interesting season, though, that he had last year. Jimmy, he'll be trying to turn that around in 2019. Yeah, that's right, part of, of course, the BMW team last year that was very unceremoniously removed from the circuit in the manufacturer's final at uh, Monaco. But uh, looking fast, as he has been all weekend out there at the BMW now. Now, the, uh, the cars are released in intervals around here. So if you did uh, tune in to the Monaco final last year, you'll be very much familiar with that format. BMW going out first, as they were the fastest qualifier yesterday in the overall qualifier. They get their first chance to go see what's going on with Mr. Rubelar at the wheel. Well, this Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit, very, very narrow track as well. Passing opportunities are very limited here as well. One of the only real overtaking opportunities will be going into the Druid's hairpin just after turn number one. So a five minute qualifying session. Jimmy, it's kind of really a one lap shootout this more than anything. Maybe they'll get a couple of laps in on the board, but it is going to be very, very tight for these drivers to get those fast lap times in to decide who lines up where on the grid. And with that 16 times tire wear, Tom, they're really looking at one flying lap. Anything beyond that is going to be absolute magic. And whilst we do have some of the best drivers in the world here, they aren't that good. <laughs> I, I don't think. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. We have, uh, I think, our drivers out on track now. I think the first uh, person on track looking to complete a hot lap is actually coming around uh, the sheen curve now. I think if we look at our track map, so we might go back to them in a second. But it is just one lap, lots of pressure. So literally one mistake around here, and you could find yourself at the back of that top six. Yeah, certainly could do. It is going to be very, very crucial, this one as well. BMW, as Jimmy said earlier, on the M6 GT3 machine, 29.9 in that first sector. That's not too too bad at all. Bit of a wide line he had going through Graham Hill. But what about Renault then? They're about to come over the timing line here. 200 kilometers an hour on the start finish straight there going over now. And they set the first benchmark lap time at 1 minute 23.804. That's not too bad, but it's not exceptional either. Honda looking a little bit quicker through that last bit. Uh, last bit, sorry. 500 up coming across the line. Will Honda go quicker? They uh, certainly they will. Do. There you go. Two temps are 123.6. Nissan now then, all the pressure on Nissan, all the pressure on the man behind the wheel, Igor Fraga as well. Over the line come Nissan, and well, that is a very slow lap time. They're going to have to really try and pull something out of the bag on what will be their final flying lap. Subaru were down in the final sector. They go over the line. They better Nissan, though. They go into third place. Maybe Nissan there trying to go a bit slower on the outlet. I'm not too sure. But anyway, in the meantime, Porsche come across the line, 123.9. Now a number one qualifier. They go into second place, a 123.668. Now I think that's qualifying done and dusted. There must have been a mistake there from Igor Fraga and Nissan. He's way off the pace. Yeah, really, really far down. You can see the gap, of course. 1 minute 23s, 24s there and thereabouts for these drivers. 138, though, for Nissan. That is going to be an absolute dog's dinner of a qualifying session if it sits as it is. What about Renault, though? They're coming into the left-hander of Sterling's, and they are three hundredths of a second faster as well as we come down the hill, heading in towards the final corner for the final time. It's all to play for here for Renault. Can they do it, though, Jimmy? Somehow getting two laps out of those tyres, I guess I'll be quiet then coming across the start finish line hugging the bottom line it's the fastest line will they go quicker than honda and take pole position they do a 123.5 positional honda are still going though as well they're five so hundredths of a second up they're five hundredths of a second up in this final sector sorry to cut across you there jimmy here they come then over the final line for the final time and honda go second fastest oh. they don't improve they drop time what about nissan though they're still two tenths of a second off they might improve in position but are they going to improve in something very well. Well, it's not indeed because no. it's fourth place at the chequered flag for Nissan. Big disappointment for them. Last chance here for Subaru. That two temps down might not be an improvement, but it is. They move up to fifth position, uh, but temporarily being ahead of Porsche, who Porsche. are very quick on now. That they come across the line, but only go third. And here comes BMW. What can they do? They've gone fastest, completely out of nowhere. 123.3 there from Nico Rublar saying, "Yep." Easy peasy. Well, we said he was trying to get vengeance, and that certainly proved to be the case. Nicholas Rubilar tops the session for BMW. They will start on pole ahead of race number one. Absolutely fantastic. You can see the delight from the BMW team. You can see Nicholas there as well. Well, he is looking very, very happy with his efforts, and quite rightly so there as well. His teammates watching on. And this is going to be a very, very interesting fight in the Manufacturer Series, Jimmy, ahead of race one at Brands Hatch. Yeah, definitely. And again, Nico Rublar proving that qualifying pace that we've seen oh so many times from him over the course of other uh, championships and World Tour events. And 
We look so very fast in that BMW, but we've kind of noticed over the race, maybe not quite as good in the race as he is in quality, but probably looking to try and dispel that today. Well, absolutely. I mean, starting from pole position certainly doesn't do you any harm, does it, over the course of uh, <laughs> starting in a race? But it's all about that race pace. And of course, this uh, race one is going to be uh, very, very important. Five laps around this Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it'll take a long time, but it's going to be over before they know it. Over very quickly indeed. Now, we spoke about Monaco, so what we're going to do is go back to a recap and show you all the action you might have missed if you weren't there last November. What a fantastic move. What a time from Nicholas Rubelon. There's no other drivers in the world with this sort of talent. BMW lead the way here for the Manufacturers World Final. Oh, uh, BMW, and they're off the lane for a by the center. No. Nissan. Oh, oh Nissan what happened there? Nissan I think. Nissan off. Door open. Nissan now dives down the inside. Down that Porsche. At the moment, we go back to Nissan. They're challenging for fourth place. Now there's a Porsche in front. They're going to be three wide. Once it goes down the outside, it's open. And a disgruntled evil frog, a hard break for the Nissan team. As in the fifth ring, pulls out past the Porsche. And that is that game set and match. Tyrell Meadows has brought the car home for Lexus. I have to say, I'm super happy to be back at the GT desk. It feels like home, but you know, it's nice to have. I'm, I only made that as a bit of a joke, the weekend wingman thing, but I feel like it should stick a little bit. It's really fun. It's nice to have you guys know. here. Are you, you happy to be on the desk? You've been, you're allowed out of the commentary booth, though. Yeah, you're allowed to be free. And a bit of freedom. Arms. I've never had so much room. You're looking a vision in yellow tonight, by the way. You're rocking that. Wow. Yeah, you see, wow. I mean, there. Getting those, those wingman points, isn't it? Goodness me. I'll no, tell you what. That was an incredible qualifying session, wasn't it? That just was fantastic. super, super amazing. I think, um, obviously, we have to, if you just kind of tuned in, so that is just the qualifying race. So this is just determining the grid position. There is still the actual real deal coming up very, very shortly. But we thought we'd um, take a little bit of a look at last year's winner, which is Le Lexus, uh, just so you can kind of see what they're up against. When you win the race, you don't believe it at first. My name is Vincent Rigaud. I'm driving for Lexus. Kawasami Kanata, so, 22-year-old, Tokyo citizen. I'm a Lexus team member. Went to St. Petersburg in Russia to go to the FIA ceremony to receive the trophies. It was a very, very good time to be there. So, I feel a little bit of pressure, but I feel like I won the race, so I feel like I won the race. 今回も勝てるようにしっかり準備を取り組んできましたし最善のと試合を最善の走りができるように今回も頑張りたいと思っています。My teammates are very cool guys, very fast drivers obviously. We are pretty much best friends now. 今回タイラーいないんですけれどもともちろん一緒に戦いたかった気持ちはありますけれども新しいメンバーになってくれたリチャードも本当に早いドライバーで。The final race in Monaco that was Crazy, like when you win the race, you don't believe it at first. It's a very fantastic feeling, like I can't describe it. But Lexus, Lexus, while this all this is going on, are the FIA GT World Final Champions. So that's Team Lexus there, not doing as well as last year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to know if you can go any higher yeah, after well, that. Higher than that, I don't think. <laughs> don't try I don't want to like stop dogs barking in homes around the globe. Uh, <laughs> so obviously they they are ninth, uh, yeah. which isn't so great. Why do you think that's happened this time? What do you think was it? Do you think it was just that, obviously you know in the previous manufacturer series, you know BMW kind of sort of got knocked out a little bit earlier on. Mm. Is it just that they weren't up against? the full force of BMW before? Well, we have to bear in mind that Brands Hatch is a very different track from the Nordschleife, a lot shorter, a lot more uh, fluid, and not uh, as many sharp corners. So may not may not be playing into the strengths of the Lexus, but uh, well, I spoke to one of the drivers earlier. He said he was very confident about the, the race pace of the car, so yeah. definitely not over for them yet.
Yeah, absolutely not. Here are Lexus and the first FIA GT Manufacturers Champions, and you can see there as well. A bit of a replacement in the lineup. Tyrell Meadows has been replaced by Richard Castro for this event. And uh, Tyrell, as we saw at the top of the show, sending the best of his luck uh, to his team. Sadly, can't be here this weekend. But uh, let's see whether they can turn things around this weekend. It just goes to show that every, you know, you think every single time, even, even last year, we're like, oh, these guys are totally going to walk it. It's just... It's all completely different every single time because suddenly, you know, you're up on stage. Suddenly it's like a different track. There's so many variables that you just can't anticipate. I mean, you can only drive your best on the day, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing, isn't it? I mean, you, luck is a certain thing that does come into motor racing. And as we saw in the world final last year, I mean, BMW, they had none of it. Lexus, they had all of it. Seems to be the tables turning, though, this time around. Why don't we take a look at the, what they're going to be racing on uh, the Brands Hatch track? Let's take a look at this. Yeah, the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit based in Longfield in Kent then. A circuit that is very, very well known in the world of motor racing. As you can see there, comprised of various twists and turns, just under four kilometers in length. Lots of undulation over the course of this track. And as we mentioned earlier on, very, very narrow. Paddock Hill, Druids, Hawthorns, Westfield, Stirlings, the Clark Curve, all a couple of, uh, a varying amount of corners that are very, very well known and recognized. You can see there the elevation change, a total of 35 meters as well. So it really is going to be a very, very interesting and exciting challenge in race one. I mean, what, what do you guys think? Have you got, are you going to call it in any way? What do, what do you reckon? Oh, I think to call it would be a silly decision. Also because all the yeah, drivers are sitting down here and they'll be very angry oh. if I call one. If you just, if you just whisper them, no, they, they're not paying attention. It's totally fine. So, of course, obviously, we've got Brands Hatch, you know, a very, very well-known circuit. But one of the things we obviously need to take a look at is the cars. So talk us through that. Yeah. Group 3 machinery for these uh, drivers to contend with over the course of this one. Jimmy, you're pretty familiar with those Group 3 cars as well. Yeah, of course, based on the real-life GT3 category, you would have known that already if you saw our uh, qualifying. Lots of these cars on display. And one of the things I love about the Manufacturer Series is we get different cars from different walks of life. As you can see, there are wider bodies and aero improvements for all the GT3 cars over the GT4 cars. A great mix and very much looking forward to seeing them all come together on the track. I'm very excited here. I have to say, first of all, obviously, it's, it's fantastic to be back here. I think the camaraderie as well, actually, between uh, not just within the teams, because obviously, you know, we've got the Nations Cup, which is about, you know, singular drivers, you know, proving themselves. And then they all kind of get jumbled up yeah. in the Manufacturer <laughs> Series. And it's actually kind of, it's lovely, because these guys, some of these guys are going to compete against each other mm. tomorrow. But yeah, there's, it's all quite lovely. Everyone's a bit, you know... You know, they won't teamwork be makes the dream they won't work, be tomorrow, doesn't it? I'll tell you that. Oh, okay, well, there's going to be like <laughs> pitchforks at dawn. <laughs> but yeah, they all seem to get on. And actually, that's one thing that I've noticed, you know, coming into the GT community is just the, the community itself is really lovely to be a part of. Yeah, it's pretty much unrivaled, isn't it? And you, we saw all the drivers shaking hands with one another before we got the event underway and just wishing everybody the best of luck. I'm sure the gloves will come off during the race. But as you said earlier on, of course, they've got to work as a team. They need to get the best results in their each individual races for that final where it's all turned on its head in terms of strategy. All three drivers are going to be involved. Tire strategies, fuel strategies, and of course, double points. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I mean, and obviously there's the camaraderie between the commentators. Is there a bit of friendly rivalry between uh, the different well, commentators? I'd say rivalry would be a bit, be a bit unfair because <laughs> we stand no chance against the Spanish and the Italian <laughs> oh, guys. Oh, my goodness. It's uh, far too loud. So I guess we're, we're best of the rest is what, <laughs> what we like to be. You need to be, have a much more song tone in your voice and be much, much louder. Oh, I can't. I can't. Well, I'm, a, I'm a pale boy from England. I haven't got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got the makeup you had to get on before we started <laughs> the broadcast, Jimmy. OK, so uh, let's go to the National Anthem of France and gi uh, give the manufacturer a series it starts.
Well then, absolutely fantastic. The national anthem is played and it's time to get the uh, race underway here, Jimmy. It's going to be a pretty exciting one, this one, isn't it? That's right. We have some qualifying standings to go over in a second, which we'll discuss. But uh, again, what can I say? It's always uh, such an atmosphere building thing to have the national anthem played out at the venue here. So here are the final standings for qualifying. Team BMW, of course, as you saw, taking first position with Renault second and Honda in third position. Team Lexus, our winner from last year, all the way down in ninth position. So a lot of work for them to do as such for Team Toyota down in 12th. Yeah, absolutely. It is going to be a very, very interesting one. This one, as we said, just five laps over the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. Racing hard tyres for these drivers to contend with. Five laps, a very narrow circuit here at Brands Hatch, Jimmy. Paddock Hill Bend as well. It's a very tight corner. It's prone to a bit of contact, yeah, let's yeah. be honest as well. What do we reckon? Turn one, lap one, any dicey moves? Well, both of us have been around uh, Brands Hatch. It's a rare time we can actually say that, <laughs> isn't yes, it? Yes, it's true. And uh, the way that Paddock Hill just falls away from you, if you're feeling a little bit brave, throw one up the inside. There's a big, big opportunity you might understeer off onto the exit of a circuit. So uh, hopefully nothing too bad. Race one of the Manufacturer's Cup here at the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit, about to get underway, five laps of the track. And it is going to be very, very exciting indeed. A rolling start for these drivers. It's Nicholas Rubelar for BMW, who starts from pole position in the BMW M6. Alongside him on the front row, David Galinsky in the Renault. Some hometown support for him here tonight. Honda in third position with Thomas Leonhardt. And alongside them, it's Diego Gonzaga in the Porsche. Difficult qualifying session for them. Just behind, though, even more difficult for the Nations Cup champion of last year, Igor Fraga in the Nissan. Coca Linen in the Subaru lines up in sixth position on the third row of the grid. Bit of finished support here tonight by that round of applause. Then we've got Adams in the Mitsubishi, who lines up in seventh place. Alongside them, it's Mercedes Benz with the Briton Ed Williams at the wheel. Ninth place on the grid, our manufacturer's champions from last year. It's Lexus with Kanata Kawakami behind the wheel of that machine. Aston Martin represented there in tenth position as well. The last row of the grid, Fabian Portilla, the Portuguese driver in the Chevrolet Corvette. And then Toyota right at the back of the grid, the Frenchman Ryan Derouche in the GR Supra racing concept. Long run up to the final corner here, Jimmy as well. Chance for these drivers to just get themselves focused ahead of the race starting. Well, our car's getting rolling now and our pole sitter in the BMW, Lucas Rubel, I'll be thinking, right, I have to defend this with all I have. Very tricky to defend round here, but lap one, uh, start of the race is when the cars are their closest, so that is the best time to try and make a move. Just take a deep breath, focus on the task at hand, go out there and race. Well, I'll tell you what, I'd love to have a heart rate monitor on these drivers just to see what sort of uh, beats it's going at this time, because I tell you what, it would be going through the roof if it were you and me, but let's see <laughs> what these drivers are going to be doing. The pressure is on, it's only race one, but it still counts for a lot, as we've seen in manufacturers' races in years gone by. Let's see what they're going to be able to do out of that final corner. What's the strategy here if you're the pole man quickly, Jimmy? Get away quickly, try and ignore Renault behind you and just focus on things and clean laps. Well, getting ready to come over the timing line we are. The Manufacturer Series in World Tour 1 in Paris is about to get underway. BMW on pole position. Who will lead the way down towards the first corner? Racing underway for the 2019 World Tour here in Paris. Down towards the first turn. BMW comfortably hold on to their lead. Anybody else closing up further back? Honda look like they've had a pretty good start there in third place, but it's pretty much as you were as we head down to Druid's Bend for the first time. No overtaking opportunities, but Honda there looking very racy against Renault in the opening couple of corners, Jimmy. They are at this point. Yes, I saw the Mitsubishi have a little bit of a slide in the background coming through Paddock Hill as the BMW mounts the curbs there. You can use all the curb on the right-hand side. Uh, everyone in line the stern right now. No position changes as of yet as we come round Surtees. A very tricky left hand. It seems to go on forever when you're in the car. And now coming down for a decent slipstreaming opportunity. Down Pilgrim's Drop and then we come up to Hawthorne. The car's very close together right now, but not close enough for a pass. Looks like the top five starting to pull away from the rest of the pack. Yeah, absolutely. A clean break, as you say there. About uh, a second back to Subaru, as you can see, in sixth position. A few car leads being created. Looks like there's already a few splinter groups, as you said. BMW, though, really pushing very, very hard indeed. Nicholas Rubelar behind the wheel here in race number one. Through the right-hander he goes, and then into the left of Sterling's. No moves being made there, but even though they are able to pull out a gap, will it count for it at the end of the race? Let's wait and see. Rublar will be happy about that uh, first lap. Already a second on the Renault car behind. Now, of course, Rublar looking for a bit of redemption after his last couple of performances at these live events. Right now, we're watching uh, 
uh, uh, uh, Ed, sorry, in the uh, Ed Williams in the number seven, or the seventh place, sorry, Mercedes. He was a little bit of a cork in the bottle at the moment, so uh, Mitsubishi are behind them. We're looking to try and get past as soon as possible. Only a very short race this time. We're already on the second lap out of five. Yeah, absolutely. As you say there, Jimmy, time is crucial in this one, and getting the opportunity to try and get past is going to be very, very limited with the limited number of laps that we've got. And we should mention, by the way, all of the teams had to nominate attack drivers going into qualifying yesterday. What that means, of course, is the driver that they would like to compete in qualifying and thus in race number one as well. So these are the drivers that are the fastest over the course of one lap. Doesn't necessarily mean too much in terms of race pace. And you can see Honda there really looking very, very racy against Renault in second position. We could be up for a bit of an overtake. This might be it here. The Honda goes to the left side, to the outside of the next corner, which is Hawthorne. Is he, is he going to try and help it round the outside? Is he going to? He's still there on the left. They're two by two now. Coming up to the fast right hand, Renault has the line, he might be able to take his place down, but Honda, oh, he does! Round the outside of Hawthorne, goes onto the grass on the exit, and he is past. What a sensational pass there by the Honda driver. That was fantastic. We just saw a notice earlier on for Aston Martin as well. They're under investigation for potentially causing a collision with another car. We ride on board with Igor Fraga in the Nissan through the left hand, and we go stuck behind the Porsche 911 at the moment. No way for him to get through, but look at Renault trying to immediately attack back on Honda to try and keep that gap in a bit of a st stable number to BMW out in front, but it's all to no avail, and now Porsche are the car attacking. See the look there, actually Costa Renault on entry, is a bit slower down the straight because of it, the Porsche now all over the back of that uh, rear wing, the Renault RS1 in front. Now the Druids is a good place to pass if you have the run, but the Porsche is a bit too far back for my liking. Late on the brakes, gives them a little love tap, says hello, I'm here, watch out for me. Look at the mirrors, Renault there, all sorts of sideways. We're on board now with the Porsche driver, Thiago Gonzaga, looking absolutely chill there, but uh, probably not feeling it. Yeah, Honda as well, really doing their best to try and exceed track limits. They're going to have to be quite careful because Race Direction are keeping a very keen eye on that. I've seen two instances in the last two corners for Honda. Let's see whether Race Direction do issue them at least a warning. They get a bit of a compromise run, though, coming out of Surtees, coming down Pilgrim's Drop for the third time. Aston Martin, again, a warning to them for colliding with another car. One more strike, and they'll probably be hit with a penalty, which is not what they'll want so early in the weekend. So we're looking back here from Leon Hot. He is the Honda driver, made that fantastic pass for a second ago, of course, you see just how more aggressive the Renault is through there, getting all sorts of sideways, you're burning up the tyres doing that, of course. A uh, very big tyre wear multiplier round here, and only one set of tyres to go on. That Renault is starting to look a little bit ragged to me, Tom. Yeah, 16 times tyre wear, of course, so one lap is the equivalent to 16 around Brands Hatch here, so the tyres, well, they are going to be very, very second-hand indeed by the time this race is over. So it's not only about being a good attacker and a good defender, it's about tyre management, it's about pace as well. And pace is what? Oh, we can see Renault have actually Renault. had an incident. Renault. They've gone off track. So Renault goes sliding down the order. A drama for them in the final sector. That is an absolute disaster for Renault. And now Porsche are up into third place against Por uh, Sorry, and Nissan are up into third place against Porsche as well. So this is chopping and changing faster than we can keep up. Big, big drama here. And what that has allowed is Honda in second position to get a bit of a clean gap. There is Renault all on their own down in 12th place. I, mean, I look down for my notes for just one split second, Tom, and it all goes off. Nissan up to third position. Very opportunistic there, of course. Paul at the uh, the battle, they say the uh, the loss of Renault now, who are now six seconds off the back. That is not how you want your manufacturer's cup to get going. I told you they were going to look a little bit skittish in those tyres. I think just one slide too many there for Renault. Yeah, absolutely. Big, big disappointment there for Renault. They're going to be on the back foot in race number two and race number three there as well. So we'll keep an eye and see how they're able to do, but only two laps left, less than two laps now um, remaining of this race. You can see Nissan there really pushing very, very hard indeed. The top three looking pretty un... Um, opposed at the moment, so let's keep an eye out and see how they go. Meanwhile, BMW are absolutely clearing off with this out in front there, Jimmy. They are nearly four seconds up the road. This is exactly the race that Rubelart would have wanted. They're all fighting behind, so there's nothing he has to worry about. What he can do in the meantime is just go as quick as he can, put in those lap times, and now, unless something goes wrong, and I hate to say that, of course, commentator's <laughs> curse, he's looking very short uh, for a win for this race. But one more lap to go. We're following the Nissan. Igor Fraga at the wheel right now. But in the background, that's oh, the Martin. Look at this. Goes up the inside of the Lexus there, up into seventh position. The Lexus, of course, our manufacturer's champions from last year. They're going to look around the outside of Druids. They're side by side, squeezing the Aston to the inside. But the Aston has the line very, I think, robustly takes it back, and the Lexus stays in eighth position. On board with Kanata Kawakami. He's the driver behind the wheel of that Lexus at the moment. Aston Martin are off the track again. They're looking pretty 
ragged here on the final lap. And Lexus looking like they were trying to find a move, but Toyota are sending it straight down the inside of Mitsubishi for ninth place here, right at the very end of that race. That is absolutely brilliant. Looks like the tyres, though, are going on that Aston Martin up in front there, Jimmy. But the tyres have gone on all of them right now. But here in that Corvette being very aggressive with the Mitsubishi. It's only for 10th, but it's still another position. Toyota holds ninth in front, but behind. Portier has to duck back in behind the Mitsubishi. Now goes to the right-hand side for the downhill right. No, not quite close enough. Still remains in 11th position. Yeah, Lewis Bentley there behind the wheel of the Chevrolet Corvette. At the moment, you can see the uh, second, third and fourth place have closed up a little bit. No such dramas, though, for BMW. They are nearly five seconds up the road, and they are going to take a very commanding victory here this evening for race one of the Manufacturer's Series in Paris. It's BMW and Nicolas Rubelard on top in race one here at Brands Hatch. Brilliant stuff in the Manufacturer's Series. Honda claims second position ahead of Nissan, also on the podium as well. Porsche in fourth, Subaru come home in fifth and seventh place there. Aston Martin just pipping Lexus to the timing line. Absolutely fantastic race, but not for this car. The Renault running in third position for oh so long. Spin, unfortunately, at clearways on the lap three, and that was their race done and dusted. Not how you want to start off for them. But for Rubelar, big smile on his face. I think that's redemption there, Tom. Yeah, it certainly is. He is, well, as you can see, over the moon. His teammates congratulating him. And BMW on top here after race one in the Manufacturer Series. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Lots of great racing up and down the field there in race number one. Our focus, of course, now switching very, very quickly to race number two. More information on that in just a few moments' time. But that was very, very exciting. What was your key highlight of that race there, Jimmy? I think the big highlight, of course, of the Renault spinning. That just chopped up the entire order, which without the Nissan driver, Igor Fraga, just to weave his way through. And, of course, that man started in fifth position. And round Brands Hatch, a track that is not really renowned for overtaken, that's a, that's a good result for him. So here is uh, the replays on the screen right now. Uh, Rublar left. Uh, let our field away and did a good job of it and we were all very clean and tidy for the first lap but it, uh, it didn't stay that way. Nope, didn't take long for it to turn on its head. You can see Honda were attacking and this was an absolutely audacious move. It was so aggressive in the opening stages of that one but they managed to hold their nerve, hold the line and get up into second place in that one. That was absolutely brilliant, very ballsy indeed. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before but that, I've said that many times over the course of our <laughs> Gran Turismo <laughs> uh, championships and there is the live reaction of Leonhardt as he gets onto the grass and I think maybe there are some uh, choice words as he went off uh, not looking too happy with that nope certainly not here is honda though this was a bit later on in the race three quarters race distance at this point you can see that is what happened to renault they went off the track coming through the final corner of clearways and that sadly was the end of their road they were down in 12th place no such dramas for the chilean though nicolas rubelar in the bmw m6 gc3 machine what an absolutely Fantastic performance. Yeah, I mean, again, just uh, I think following off from the potential they had at the Manufacturers Series. So definitely a good race. We have some standings coming up on screen for you guys very shortly. We'll go over those in a tick. Still waiting for them on our screen. Um, but yes, uh, Tom, I mean, what, what can we say about that? I mean, I think the big upset for me was definitely Renault. I mean, yeah, they, absolutely. they had a good chance to get a podium. Easy podium just didn't come. Yeah, well, I mean, we saw their pace, didn't we? They were really in contention, at least for a top five and finishing down in 12th position. Really, really low in the point standings there, of course, going to be the point standings will, of course, reflect the results of race number one. That's going to put them on the back foot. However, they do have a bit of a chance at redemption. Race two and three, normal strategy, of course. Race number four, though, the final race of the evening for the Manufacturer Series. It's double points. It's an entirely different strategy. Three different tyre selections for the drivers to contend with. Three different drivers as well. It's going to be very interesting. And maybe if everything kind of goes their way in races two and three, they might be able to get something back. Yeah, maybe. We'll have to wait and see. But in the meantime, let's go have another look at that fantastic overtake uh, from the Honda car. Here it is on your screen right now. So this is set up nice and early on the outside. At this point, the Renault driver knows the Honda is there and very respectfully gives him a little bit of space on the outside. But because of that, slows himself down coming out of Hawthorne's. Honda Leonhardt just dives to the inside, chops off the nose of Renault, and that is position done. Not just as simple as making the move gone, but as you can see, it's a, it's a thought, it's set up, and that was just executed perfectly. That was absolutely fantastic. And let's get a look at the standings then, and shall we, after race number one for the Manufacturer Series. BMW, of course, on top. 12 points on the ball for them so far. Honda there in second place, Nissan in third. Porsche in fourth, Subaru inside the top five there as well. But look at the bottom of the order. Renault, Chevrolet, Nil Poir on the board for those manufacturers. Yeah, I mean, the Lexus, of course, um, not, not, not great for our manufacturers uh, champions down there, but better than coming last, I should say, better than not scoring at all like Renault and Chevy down the bottom.
Yeah, absolutely right, as you say there, Timmy. So very, very exciting stuff indeed after race number one. So Darush was the uh, driver who ended up uh, going off the circuit, as we saw earlier on there as well. And uh, in fact, he's had some uh, very disappointing luck over the course of this race as the hometown driver here as well. Here is Darush, so you can see some statistics on your screen now as well. Total races, 42. Total wins, nine. What about Ika Kokalainen there as well? A different ratio for him. 57 races so that he has had and 16 wins he's had in total. That's a 28% uh, over 21% of Darush. So uh, different statistics there just showing how hard it can be to be so competitive here in the Manufacturer Series, Jimmy. Yeah, those stats are a lot better than my stats. I can, I can tell <laughs> and mine now. as well. Definitely. But what we'll do now is we'll pass over to our host, Julia, who has the winning team for an interview. So, yes, I'm here with BMW and, of course, Nicholas Rublar, the driver who's just taken it over the finish line for this first race. So, Nicholas, obviously, when we've seen you previously, you've done very, very fast in the qualifiers. And then when it came to the races, not so fast. So it's kind of like redemption. You've proved yourself right. Yeah, completely. Um, I've, made, I've made so many mistakes on the past events. So, yeah, doing... <laughs> finally, I can race without crashing. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, this is great. So, I mean, did it feel quite comfortable, this race? Completely. The, the pole position gave me the comfort that I need. Yeah. So, basically, it's that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, obviously, that's fantastic that you've got that kind of redemption. But now, are you going to just relax? I mean, you know, you've only got one more race to go. These guys have got to take the pressure now. Yeah, completely. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but I have faith my teammates when I do really good on, this, on the next races. And uh, do you guys feel okay? You're, you're ready now, it's your turn. You've got to keep up with him now. Yeah. 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 Nico uh, made some great results out there, so uh, it's going to connect very well to, uh, you know, to him now, and uh, I think we're in a good position. Fantastic. Well, good luck, guys. Uh, we're going to throw it back to Tom and Jimmy for our next race. I'll tell you, what will we do without Nishida San? That man is a lifesaver, yeah, isn't he? Way, he? He did. He just, he just appears <laughs> at the most random of times. Well done to BMW, the winners of race one in the Manufacturer Series. Our focus now, though, shifts over to race number two, Jimmy. The Tokyo Expressway is the scene. Different drivers, of course, in the cars, starting order reflecting race one. Let's have a bit of a look at this Tokyo Expressway circuit behind us on this monitor, as you can see. So, of course, based in Japan, based on real life as well. And as you can see, it is an absolutely fantastic circuit. Interesting track that we were talking about earlier on, though, Jimmy. A few sweeping corners, but in particular, a very slow one there in sector number two. Yeah, very, you, you approach that at quite a high speed as well. So, very good place to overtake. Very different from the circuit we've just been at, Brown Tax. It's a street circuit, of course, meaning that if you go wide, you don't go into the grass, you go into the wall. It's yeah. not really ideal. No, it certainly isn't. You can see an elevation change 24 meters around the Tokyo Expressway, of course, adorning the uh, Tokyo City as well. It really is going to be a very, very interesting kettle of fish, this one. Lots of unpredictability over the course of this one. So, you can see on screen now group four machines for the Tokyo Expressway for race number two in the manufacturer series five laps in total racing hard tires 13 times tire wear four times fuel consumption rolling start once again for these drivers realistic slipstream but crucially there Jimmy the track back on the left the uh, penalty line just out of turn number eight that is right when the part of the lap where you don't want to get a penalty at all now, ideally you're full throttle from uh, from T8 all the way down to T14 pretty much so if you get a penalty there it's no really cost you now Last time over, we were in our Group 3 cars. This time, we are in our Group 4 cars. A little bit different from the Group 3 cars, of course. Group 4 cars, a little bit less powerful. And uh, in my opinion, I think a little bit more a little bit more fun to drive. But easier to handle as well. Different sort of kettle of fish, as you say there, Jimmy. These uh, Group 4 machines, of course, very uh, similar in some ways to the Group 3 machines. They're still based on production cars, but of course, they're entry-level sort of things. They're not as modified as heavily as the Group 3 machines. So less downforce, of course, less grip, makes it a little bit more tricky to drive. Tires can, of course, spin up as well. All manner of drivetrains available in these Group 4 machines as well. You've got front engine, rear wheel drive, mid engine, rear wheel drive, rear engine, rear wheel drive as well. The possibilities are going to be pretty endless and very, very exciting as well. I think I really love the idea of a uh, Group 4 Ferrari racing a front wheel drive car. <laughs> I, I, I think that's just, a, I, I love that idea so much. So we have our standings on or coming on screen right now for as we stand at the moment. Just a quick reminder, of course, Team BMW winning the last race at the head of the field on 12 points. Honda in second with 10 and Nissan in third. But that doesn't mean things are over right now two more races and then we get into our final race which is as you said earlier tom worth double points so even if your chevy right there down there zero points 
not quite over just yet. No, absolutely not. It's not over till the fat lady sings, as the uh, saying goes. So <laughs> let's see what's going to happen. That's quite an expression that I didn't really need to be using, let's be honest. But it is going to be very, very exciting, this one. So you can see the players getting ready. Race number two for the Manufacturer Series about to get underway very, very shortly. Just a reminder, five laps. It's about 26 kilometres in total. Let's get ready to go. So then, the Tokyo Expressway for race number two in the Manufacturer Series, of course. The grid results reflecting the results of race number one, but group four machinery for these guys as well. And in the BMW, it is Nishima-san on home soil. So they keep an eye out for him. What about Honda there in second place? Arai-san in the NSX machine. Second row of the grid, Jimmy. We have Cookie Bomb there, our Asia Ocean, a regional champion in third, then this out, and then fourth it is the Porsche, driven by Fonseca. Third row of the grid, we've got Subaru. And you can see there JT Loro, the American driver. Delighted to be back with his team. Alongside him, though, in sixth position, it is Nakao San in the Mercedes-Benz GT3 machine. Tom McPherson there in the Aston Martin down in seventh place. Lexus all the way down in eighth place. Richard Castro, of course, the new Lexus teammate for this weekend. He's got a lot of work to do. Kajal in ninth position in the Toyota 86 Group 4 machine. And then the Mitsubishi lines up in 10th position with the brand new competitor, Avancino. And in the final row of the grid, Lewis Bentley for Britain lines up in the Corvette once again. Alongside them, it is Renault right at the back. A lot of work for them to do. Definitely, and what a track to do it at. Now, it's, uh, as we said, pretty much a street circuit, this one. So getting past people early is going to be the name of the game if you hope to have a successful run. Coming the BMW leading us away. Uh, from the head of the grill. And now you see on the right-hand side of your picture, the track map. Now, at the top of the picture, you see a very sharp hairpin. That's going to be probably the best place to overtake. So those of the with cars that are a little bit quicker in a straight line might be trying to use that to their advantage, maybe throw one up the inside to get past ASAP. Of course, it being a five-lap race, these guys have to make these tires last at the end, even with the massive tire wear multiplier going to be a challenging one. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it may be a city circuit, but it is a little bit easier to overtake on this Tokyo Expressway, a little bit wider as well. And of course, some longer straights to get a bit more of a slipstream. So the drivers then around the final corner, they are now getting ready to get race two of the Manufacturer Series underway very, very shortly. Five laps of this track, four times fuel consumption, 13 times tire wear, and it's all to play for in terms of the standings. We get ready then to get race two of the Manufacturer Series underway here in Paris. The Tokyo Expressway is the scene and BMW leads the field as we come over the timing line to start the first lap. Out of five of racing, is anybody going to think about a move into the first corner? They're probably not going to be close enough unless they've got a really good run. Mercedes-Benz looking very racy. They're already ahead of Subaru at turn number one. Using the grunt there of that AMG to get past nice and early. Meanwhile, Honda and Nissan, nose to tail. Now we're coming up to a left-hander which comes on to quite a long straight. This is where the cars with high horsepower are going to come into play. Here comes Nissan to the left of the Honda not quite fast enough in a straight line, or is it? It's starting to pull now as we get up into fifth gear. One more gear to go, but here comes the hairpin. Heavy on the brakes now. Honda on the inside. Porsche there as well. Oh, Porsche oh. there. Take both of them. Absolute sneak job there from the Porsche up the inside. Thank you very much, he says. But now, four-wheel drive. Nissan on the exit, putting on the Porsche. Where did he come from? He just got popped up from somewhere. <laughs> that was the full definition of send it and hope for the best, because that was absolutely brilliant from the Porsche driver. Really, really wonderful stuff from the German manufacturer, Von Schetter, the Portuguese driver behind the wheel of that machine. Nissan, though, in second place. Porsche on the attack in third position through the left-hander. And again, as we had in race one, Jimmy, BMW already pulling out a gap. Nearly a second, over a second now is their advantage. Well, here comes the Porsche once again, looking at the inside of the Nissan. Late on the brakes, and move made, and they're both going to make it into the corner. They do, so that Porsche looking very quick at the moment. Now, can he challenge the BMW? The reason why they're falling back a little bit is because these two are fighting. That's allowing the BMW to get away. And look how light on the brakes the Porsche is compared to the Nissan. But on traction, the four-wheel drive from Nissan comes back into play, puts them back alongside. Looking around the outside now, these guys don't want to leave each other alone. No, side by side they come. This is absolutely brilliant stuff. Nissan on the outside, Porsche on the inside of the circuit. Lap one already done here at the Tokyo Expressway. Nissan get the advantage on Porsche. They're side by side. Can they hold it on the brakes as we come down towards that first corner for the second time of asking? Can Porsche hold it? No, they can't. Oh. Nissan into second position. Brilliant stuff. Oh, and BMW you've made a mistake. They've lost a ton of time. Their gap from over a second is now down to just three tenths. And more importantly, that allows Nissan back into the slipstream, which it needs coming down the straight here. And this could be a change for the lead, uh, depending on how close Nissan is. Porsche goes into the wall, slows down a little bit now. In the slipstream, you see the gap coming down your left of the time, and then Nissan will go to the inside here, surely. 
No, decides to wait. I tell you what, though, who's had a stinker of an opening lap there? Jimmy Honda, they've gone from second down to sixth position. That is an absolute disaster for the Japanese manufacturer. Home soil they're on, and they're now down to seventh place. They're losing time hand over fist here in these Group 4 cars. And that traction from the Nissan coming back into play once again alongside the BMW. It has the run, but this, this set is very, very quick, very hard to go two by two through here, but still, Gokubon sits on the rear bumper and goes past the BMW now. Next corner's a left hand. It's going to be his uh, work cut out to stay there. Side by side, he's kept it there. And Kokubon just showing why he is the Asia Oceana Regional the Champion. Look at the as well. In the background, free white on. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Nissan into the lead of the race. Toyota, Subaru, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche all vying for third position in this race as well. Aston Martin also involved there in third place as well. Seems to have calmed down momentarily. But into the flip-flop chicane we go and some very, very exciting racing on lap two here. I think to say the elbows are out, uh, be a bit of an understatement at this point. These guys are going at it like it, uh, their life depends on it. It pretty much does only a couple of laps left at this point. The Renault's made a fantastic start. It started down in 12th place. It's now up to 7th and catching the Super. Meanwhile, Honda going the other way. Yeah, absolutely right. Chevrolet now on the attack as well. Lewis Bentley behind the wheel of the machine through into the first corner. We're going to go once again. They've got the inside line. Our Lexus going to follow them through. Well, Chevrolet looked like they got the job done and dusted before that first corner, actually. So nice moving there from Lewis Bentley behind the wheel of the Chevrolet. Meanwhile, the battle focusing back in front. BMW looking like they might fall into the coattails of Aston Martin here. This is going to get very, very interesting. Behind the wheel, of course, of that Aston Martin is Tom McPherson at the moment. And in the BMW, of course, it is Sunishima san who we saw earlier on. Meanwhile, Mercedes-Benz now on the defensive. Porsche looking pretty racy in the opening couple of laps there, Jimmy, but they're losing out a little bit here as Renault and Subaru behind go side by side once again. Yeah, again, Renault making that move stick. It was a little bit robust to my liking down to the head, but regardless, Renault now up to sixth position and closing fast on the Porsche and the Mercedes. Well, a fast start for the Porsche, but now starting to fall back a little bit. Likewise with the Mercedes-Benz, but at the front of the field, we have to contribute in the Nissan just driving away with it. He now has 1.7 seconds, but here is a battle for second place. BMW and Aston Martin. Aston Martin on the outside drives by the BMW. Like it standing still. Glorious V8 vantage there. A fantastic sounding thing both in game and in real life. Plus it goes to BMW up into second place. Brilliant, brilliant stuff there for Aston Martin. That's something for Britain to smile about. You can see them really using all the curves there. Well, that is absolutely wonderful. Some great racing going on here at the Tokyo Expressway with three laps in, soon to become four. Four laps in in just a couple of moments time you can see behind as well brilliant battles going on Renault on the attack against Porsche Porsche are really losing out in the late stages side by side they come over the line Renault are going to be ahead surely before the first corner they'll be able to hold it on the brakes from there they've got track position and they've got fifth position in the race as well what an amazing drive this has been from Renault from last place up to fifth now and still looking for more so uh, Mercedes now a couple about a second or so in front of the Renault can it catch up. The Porsche, though, not letting Renault get away with us. I'm sure I wouldn't be as well. Coming down now to the long run to the right-hander. Renault goes defensive to the inside. To say he goes defensive is an understatement. He hugs the wall on the right like it's his favourite aunt and then tries to keep him on the outside. He does do so. Who's got a better traction? Looks like the Renault, that front-wheel drive machine, doing a fantastic job. Absolutely brilliant stuff. So the Renault seemingly a bit kinder on its tyres, perhaps, than Porsche. Of course, tyre wear, a very key factor. Times 13 around this Tokyo Expressway. No such dramas, though, for Nissan at this stage. Two seconds, their advantage. They are clear out in front. Porsche, meanwhile, are losing time hand over fist. They are falling into the clutches very much so of Chevrolet on this penultimate lap. They've gone from potentially fighting for the podium, now down into the clutches of the top seven. So it seems down the battle for second, pulling up once more. We have the AMG now getting up into the, with the top two, uh, second and third, sorry, I should say. So this is now a four freeway scrap. I can't count on a free race scrap for second place. Aston Martin looking a little bit ragged in these later stages. Rear wheel drive machine, of course, lots of power, lots of torque, and that BA ends are very easy to spin the wheels. Of course, just behind them, we have this great battle for fifth, sixth, and seventh place, head of which is the McGann, which isn't quite, unfortunately, catching up with the Mercedes, but still trying to hold off these guys behind. So, on board now with Lewis Bentley in the Chevy Corvette. Someone else has started down the field, down the left position. He's followed the Renault through. He's going to look to the outside of the Porsche. What sort of run has his American VA got? No, not quite close. I can see how close Lewis sits to the wheel there. Actually, it's quite uncomfortable, but it's how it races best. 
the end of Porsche again just tucked in the wall slowing itself down on exit well very very interesting stuff you can see these three running almost nose to tail final lap of racing here and look at Porsche they are trying to attack Chevrolet coming to join the party there as well this is getting absolutely incredible stuff and Nissan and BMW and Mercedes Benz at the front of the field Mercedes and Aston Martin for third position are going head to head and look at Porsche trying to send it down the inside Renault have gone wide they've gone wide and Porsche oh! has contact between Renault and Chevrolet as well Chevrolet go through Renault losing two positions in the space of one corner so we have Aston Martin now up into uh, second position with BMW in third actually that's how it was before but they all chopped they all chopped and changed and Aston come out on top just about that still now nose to tail again long sits between down look how close these guys are you couldn't throw a blanket over these guys and Aston Martin now the leader the leader of the way BMW in the sixth screen but the AMG has the grunt looks to the outside nearly three wide now coming up to the right hander who's it going to be AMG looks to the outside of the Bimmer doesn't quite make it to work but now it's going to try and cut back no big blue BMW on the apex and they still remain second third and fourth one more corner from home then for these guys is anybody going to think about the Dan Dare move through the chicane we go flipping it left flipping it right well this is absolutely brilliant stuff Chevy in fifth Chevy in fifth somehow, I have no idea how that's worked, but here is our winner of the second race of the Manufacturing Series, Ryoko Kotiman in the Nissan, what a race from him. And in the background, Aston Martin second, BMW third, Mercedes uh, fourth, and a fantastic race for Chevy and for Renault, fifth and sixth from 11th and 12th respectively. Well, that was absolutely fantastic stuff. So Nissan take blood here in Japan and Ryota Kokubon, the driver behind the wheel, perhaps he knows those Tokyo streets very, very well. And that was an absolutely fantastic performance. You can see the elation on the competitors' faces down here on the floor in Paris as well. Absolutely brilliant stuff. I can't wait to see what the standings are going to be like because that was incredible. Group four machines, as you say there, Jimmy, always producing good racing. And that was certainly no exception in any way, shape or form. I have to say, I was a little bit worried after Brands. So I had to thought they were taking it a little bit easy. But then, of course, we get this race and they're all just... Uh... Uh, knocking each other silly. Fantastic racing. Um, I think maybe a little bit for the stewards to do. There was a, little, a couple a of bumps, contact, a couple of scrapes. Um, but luckily that isn't my job. Otherwise I'd probably be quite unpopular. I yeah. think. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Well, I tell you what, that was an absolutely incredible race. Well done to Nissan. Well done to Ryota Kokiobun as well. Mm. Once he got out in front, that four-wheel drive Nissan was absolutely incredible. Let's have a look at some replays though. Jimmy, guide us through these overtakes. Well, here, the, the, the first one, the massive one, the Porsche, just taking the opportunity, sending it free wide and then very, very momentarily going up to second, but then the traction of Nissan coming back into play and then down to third. But Honda, Honda just seems a bit backwards in that race. Yeah, absolutely right. You can see there Porsche versus Nissan at the moment. Side by side, they were going. This is on the opening lap of the race for second position. Nissan really putting the hammer down very, very early on. And that was pretty crucial, really, to helping them win the race. Having that pace earlier on really did help them uh, get that uh, gap down to BMW out in front and uh, then eventually take the lead. Yeah, sorry, Tom, we did actually have a BMW making a mistake, of course, coming mm. down the T1. This is why the still closed back up so substantially. And this was the result. Nissan goes to the inside. A fantastic place for over take here not really a place you want to do it but using that front of the GTR going side by side with the BMW and what respect between the drivers to do this at this speed and coming away with zero contact yeah absolutely right well let's not forget of course Nissan last year finished 10th place in the manufacturers world final with Ryota Kokiban at the wheel and that is a very big turnaround in fortunes for them in race number two this was on lap three this was Aston Martin versus BMW Aston coming very very strong at the end of that race it did become a very big scrap though for position didn't it yeah, and then here was, of course, Renault and Chevy all together. You see the Porsche goes to the inside. Renault throws it goes a bit wide. Understands that front-wheel drive. And Lewis Bentley in the corner goes, thank you very much, mate. Pass I go. And a little bit of hit and shoulder on the way through. But on the way to fifth, fantastic move. Well, that was absolutely fantastic. So what was your highlight then of the race for that one then, Jimmy? Because I, caught, I tell you what, there was even more action in race two as opposed to race one. I think the highlight, or guess the people I should give the most credit to, would be to Renault and to Corvette. They came through the field, of course, the Corvette as well. Uh, perhaps not the best around this tight street circuit, but from uh, 11th to 5th, I mean, you've got you to gotta give some applause for that. Yeah, really, absolutely. Lewis Bentley doing a great job behind the wheel of that uh, Chevrolet Corvette machine. Brilliant, brilliant racing up and down the field, really. There was action wherever you looked over the course of that one, wasn't there? There was action further back. There was action at the front. There was even a bit of action in the middle as well. I enjoyed that 
our drivers pretty much every opportunity went, you know what, let's go free wide. <laughs> let's do it and see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. It gives us some things to talk about as well, doesn't it? The late braking moves. I tell you what, though, the Porsche in the early stages, do you see how late they were on the brakes mm. going into that chicane in the final sector? Yeah, I have to say what happened through there is maybe a little bit of tie wear, but here are those race results confirmed. As you can see, Nissan, Ryota Kokibun, our Asia Oceana regional champion, taking the, uh, the win with Tom McPherson in the Aston Martin second and BMW uh, Tima in third position. Now, of course, our winner from the uh, from uh, the first race, BMW. So first and a third so far from those. Looking good for BMW. Yeah, certainly is. Well, Ryota Kokiban, of course, ninth in the Nations Cup World Final last year. Tenth, as we said earlier on, in the no, Manufacturers Championship last year for Team Nissan as well. And he actually highlights one of the reasons why he is so good is because his care on the tyres really he's really good at tyre management and just how important is that over the course of a race distance we've got tyre wear in that particular race on times 13 so it really is quite crucial to manage those tyres especially isn't it we have to think of course especially at the tokyo circuit there are a lot of uh, very slow slow uh, corners which means big acceleration zones and if you're just nailing the front of that every corner like you, you know you're, like you're not paying for the tyres mm. um, then you're going to end up losing them with you know two three laps to go and that's just a nightmare. You have no way of defending. The car is horrible to drive. You just end up going slower and slower and slower. So if you're good with tyre wear, it's going to be really, really beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. Rio Tokokiban doing a brilliant job of managing the tyres. And that four-wheel drive system as well mm. that he's managing, how, what difference do you think that would make to say if you've got a rear-wheel drive car, a front-wheel drive car, when the tyre wear is on that sort of severity? But when you have a, a, a four-wheel drive car, traction is your friend, understeer is your enemy. Um, so you're very quick coming out the corners, but as soon as you try and throw it into a fast corner, you've got all four wheels pushing, the car's going to just go to the outside very slowly. So you have to kind of account for that. Same with a front-wheel drive car. Very, you want to drive that car that you, you're trying to straighten off the corners as much as possible. Try not to accelerate and turn at the same time because the front wheel drive, uh, front wheels are just doing everything. The tyres are just they're braking, they're turning, they're accelerating. So very easy to burn those. Rear-wheel drive, opposite way around, of course. Very, very easy to, uh, to mess up the rear tyres if you're a bit too enthusiastic. But anyway, yeah, that's absolutely right, to Julia. Yeah, let's see what Julia has to say. <laughs> there you go. Let's all go to Julia. Go on. <laughs> I mean, it's hardly surprising Nissan are doing so well. Honestly, you know, you've got some of the top competitors from the Nations Cup last year who are looking to obviously, you know, do exceedingly well again tomorrow. No pressure or anything. But, you know, the longer these seasons go on and the more these guys get to know each other and race with each other, you know, more of these grudges are going to start coming out and kind of reasons why people are doing things in a certain way. And actually, what's quite interesting is we spoke to uh, Portia about exactly the reason why he wanted to race in that first race and not any of the others. It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I think they, they really wanted to go with their best drivers. Uh, we all know that Nico's insane in, the, in that track. He's also very good on the BMW. And Fraga is definitely more, the most capable driver to, to keep the, that Nissan on pace. So yeah, it was very good in, in order to get the best position for the following race. Yeah, so it's it's super interesting to actually chat about, you know, all the different kind of strategies and reasons, you know, some personal, some actually quite technical why uh, everyone does things in certain ways in here. It's ultimately very, very fascinating. So let's take a quick look at the schedule and see what the rest of the day is going to be looking like. So we have two of our races out of the way now. We do have our third race, which is the final driver from each of the manufacturers series teams. And then, of course, we have the exceedingly dramatic final race where we basically have every single one of the drivers go through. They have to get in and out of the seats not fall over that would be one of my issues uh, and obviously you have to deal with all of the tire strategies as well in that final race plus no pressure but double points so everything can change it's pretty much how it goes i want to chuck over to tom and jimmy yeah cheers julia thank you very much welcome back over to the commentary box i'll tell you what i'd have a tenner on julia falling over yeah, i've, I've, got, I've got an image of her now just Stacking it, <laughs> trying to get into the seat. <laughs> Goodness me. Well, then, anyway, our focus now switches from race two over to race number three and the Suzuka circuit, which is right behind me as well. I tell you what, this is the only circuit, of course. It's in a figure of eight in Japan. And it, what a circuit it is as well. Full of history, full of drama, full of some great overtaking opportunities. 5.8 kilometers long, long, long lap for these guys as well. Now, I always say that if you're a racing enthusiast, you know Suzuka. Fantastic first section with the, uh, the S's through there, up to Dunlop then through to the two Degners, down to the hairpin. Fantastic spot to overtake then, of course, towards the end of the circuit as we cross over 
the fantastic, memorable, and very scary 130R. Yeah, 52 meters of undulation for these drivers to contend with as well. You can see then the race three statistics for you. Group three machines, five laps of this track, 12 times tire wear, four times fuel consumption. Again, as we've had already a rolling start, realistic slipstream, but back in group three machines, different challenge for these cars, these teams, these drivers as well. And as you can see there, Jimmy, the penalty line just coming out of the spoon curve onto the longest straight on the lap there as well. Crucial part to get a penalty. You get a penalty there, you're losing pretty much every position. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely right there, Jimmy, as you say. So let's have a look at the point standings as it sits at the moment. You can see a tie at the top between Nissan and BMW. Eight points in race one for Nissan, four points in race two. Reverse that for BMW. Aston Martin, meanwhile, trailing six points behind there in third position. Just a couple of points back is Mercedes, Porsche, and Honda as well. It's all pretty close there as you get further down the order. Finally, Lexus, though, have some points. Anyway, with all that over, let's get ready to go racing. Race three for Manufacturer Series on the way now. Welcome to race three for the Manufacturer Series for World Tour 1 here in Paris. Well, it is all changed once again. The Suzuka Circuit is the host of this particular race. Of course, as with last time, the results of race two reflecting the results of race of the grid for this round. And it's Nissan with Mick Hazal at the wheel for this one. Aston Martin alongside with Christopher Marshall in second position. Then the second row of the grid, Mike Zosha, the German driver behind the wheel of the BMW Mercedes-Benz with Marjan alongside him on that second row of the grid. Jimmy, row three. Row three, we have Fujioka in the Chevy Corvette starting from fifth position. Then behind him in the Renault is Coque Lopez, fan favorite uh, from the Madrid event. Then we go down to seventh position. We have Sugawara there in the Porsche. Very quick in practice, not quite been as good in the event itself. Then we have in the Subaru Miyazono, uh, very, a very beautiful looking car, it's not been so quick so far. Then we have uh, the, one of the champions from last year in the Lexus there, uh, starting ninth in Yamanaka. Again, a very aggressive driver, so looking to see him gain some positions in the 11th place. Yoshida, Shogu Yoshida in 11th place in the Mitsubishi. Then rounding out our grid is Rublar. Diego Rublar, uh, brother of Nicholas. Yeah, there you go. So both together. Absolutely. Brothers in arms here in different cars, though, as well, for that matter. So let's see how they will fare over the course of this round. Nissan. Then Mick Hazal, we know how fast he is, Jimmy. Can he break a gap like we saw in the Tokyo Expressway a few minutes ago? We will see. We know the Nissan in the Group 3 car is uh, somewhere in the middle of the field, we think, in terms of draw pace. But uh, that's where drivers like Mick Hazal come in. Very, very talented, of course. Second of last year in our Nations Cup. He said, he, he, I think I really should have won that. And that's his goal this year. Yeah, absolutely right. And quite rightly so as well. So just going through 130R, of course, called that because it's a 130 degree radius corner. You'd never have guessed. <laughs> Original, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You'd never have guessed. Anyway, coming into that chicane, of course, as well, the final chicane on the lap, which is so, so important in terms of history. It's where Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost got together in 1989. This circuit steeped in history as well. And so exciting to have race number three for the Manufacturer Series about to get underway. Nissan Jimmy about to lead them over the line. Yeah, so here we are, countdown, and it's Mick Hazel that leads us off for race three then in the Manufacturer Series. Rolling start, so nice and easy down to T1. What Mick will be thinking right now is right, I need a gap. We're going to need a gap quickly from the guys behind in the Aston Martin. Super in the background already going defensive, it seems. Not so quick in a straight line, losing time to the Oh, Mick Hazel! He's off for the away. first turn! Big off. drama! Big drama! Lots of outbreaking. Mercedes going down. BMW going down. Contact! Absolute carnage in the opening couple of corners. The upshot is Aston Martin lead the way after turn number two and three. And the look of despair on some of the drivers' faces down here on the floor is undeniable. But Aston Martin, Mercedes-Benz, Renault, Porsche, now your top four. Nissan down in fifth place from pole position. That is an absolutely nightmare start for Mick Hazel. Here it is again. So it comes down on T1, just carries too much speed in, Tom. Gets out onto the slippy stuff on the outside. Slides, Aston Martin just avoids them. BMW, BMW followed them in. Merck, and also, I think, Renault, sort of Corvette in the background. Look at that. And then gets absolutely hip and shoulders off the circuit with the Porsche with nowhere to go. So the stewards will be looking into that, but it just looks like Everyone just dragged a bit too late, I think. Got a bit confused by the guys in front spinning. Absolutely. Well, it's easy to follow the drivers in, and that is exactly what Mick Hazal happened to do. BMW followed them in as well, and that is not what they would have wanted. Tsunashima San, uh, sorry, Mike Zosha, rather, I should say, rather, in uh, third position. So, meanwhile, let's have a look and see who is in third position there. Now, it is the Renault, of course, and uh, we're on board with Sugarawa San. 
He's driving, of course, the Porsche, the 911 RSR through the spoon curve. We go for the first time, fourth place for them so far. Right behind the Renault RSO, one bit of oversteer going through the spoon curve, getting onto the power that might compromise their speed down the end of the straight, but they do have the advantage of the slipstream. Meanwhile, Aston Martin, Chris has come early for the British manufacturer. They've now got 3.2 seconds out in front. Yes, definitely, but the race is not over, and Corvette getting a five-second penalty there for colliding with another car. We didn't quite catch that, but meanwhile, on screen, Renault goes up the inside of Mercedes Benz, cuts off the Mercedes in front and takes the position. What a move that was. That was very firm there. Absolutely brilliant stuff for the Renault RS01. Fantastic stuff for the driver at the wheel as well. Of course, Coque Lopez really doing a very, very good job. Very big fan favourite. Meanwhile, Nissan back on the attack. Mercedes on the attack of Renault once again. Side by side they come down to the first corner. Renault go defensive. Do they hold the line into the next turn? Yes, they do. He tried to get the switch back. It wasn't quite something that was able to pay off. And likewise, Nissan in fifth position still weren't able to get ahead of Porsche down the start finish straight. Well, nice to know they all made it from T1 this time. That's an improvement at least, isn't it? But you can see just how quick this Renault is coming through the S's compared to the Mercedes behind, who's actually now acting as a cork in the bottle for Porsche and Nissan. Of course, Mick Hazel driving now with the bit between his teeth. A terrible start for our runner-up in the Nations Cup last year. He'll be looking to try and rectify that as quick as possible. Of course, Aston Martin looking for a big points all here to put them back into contention for the lead of this series. So, coming up now, the second deck. Now, Renault with a little bit of a gap now over Mercedes, but a good run out there with second deck by Porsche. He'll go to the outside now, coming up to the hairpin. He wants to be on the inside, ideally. Very quick through there. There's no contact as of yet. Porsche looks around the outside. A bit of a touch <laughs> there for Mercedes onto the rear quarter of the Porsche. And just for now, holds the lead, but not over yet, Tom. So, so close. They're going to be running side by side through the sweeping right-hander down towards Spoon. Porsche have the inside line, but they're going to have the outside line. And here comes Nissan in the slipstream as well. Keep it clean, boys. We don't need any penalties being given out. We need you to keep it on the straight and narrow. Porsche outbreak themselves. That allows an opportunity for Nissan. Nissan up into fourth place through Spoon Curve. Brilliant stuff. Mikazal and also Toyota now about to follow them through. Nose to tail they come down the back straight. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And Toyota, we ride on board with in the slipstream of Porsche. Can they launch a move? Can they invent something into 130R on lap number two here? Through the corner they go. They still run as they were. Any moves going to be made into the chicane? Not anybody close enough. Porsche has a look. Nissan has oh. a look as well. Audacious move from Nissan. They're down the inside. They force Renault off the track. And also Toyota goes through on Porsche as well. Fantastic. And Toyota, oh. the last big, big slide out of the final corner. Porsche and Toyota running side by side now on the start finish straight. I have no idea how Yamanaka kept that car going in a straight line for that. Just got shoved onto the grass there and just about kept it. And in the meantime, of course, Mick Hazel back up into third position. I've got a feeling our stewards are going to be looking at that uh, uh, last couple of corners and we'll probably get back from them very shortly. But in the meantime, Toyota's still in sixth position. I was going to say, if anyone's going to make a move out of a lot of them, it's going to be Yamanaka. We saw how aggressive he was last year in uh, pretty much every event he attended and pretty much known for that amongst the drivers. So if you see him in your mirrors, you kind of expect something to, to happen within the next couple of corners. So Nissan third, Mercedes-Benz fourth on your screen right now. Porsche fifth and Toyota sixth in the front of the field. Aston Martin are being caught slightly, Tom, by Renault. The gap has gone from three to 1.9 seconds. And a notice from Race Direction, as you said there, Jimmy, for the incident involving Mercedes and Nissan in that final sector on that last lap we just had. So let's see whether Race Direction issues some penalties, whether they have to uh, offer something. And Porsche into the back of Mercedes there, into the next corner as well, into the hairpin. That forces Mercedes wide. Porsche on the outside now they go through the left, the right-hander. Into the left-hander, a spoon coming up. They'll have the inside line. Can they make the move stick? They dart back into the slipstream of Mercedes-Benz, do Porsche. Can they think about something? Not quite through there. He's going to want to be in the slipstream now for that back straight, thinking ahead. He's the Porsche driver. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Oh. Absolutely fantastic. Sugarawa sound behind the wheel of the car. And Mercedes-Benz getting all sorts of squirrely. And also Toyota coming into play now as well. We're going to be nearly three wide on this back straight. Toyota versus Porsche. Side by side, they come down to 130R. And look as well, they're going to try and pick up Mercedes in the same turn. Not quite close enough, but up into fifth place. Brilliant. Oh, big slide from Mercedes. And down into the chicane we go. They go defensive. Toyota on the outside. Porsche on the outside of Toyota. Toyota as well. On the inside, they go into the left-hander. Cluster off. Here comes Lexus and Mitsubishi also joining the party. Pretty much all the cars on track scrapping now. Pushing now free wide coming down the main straight. Porsche is a little bit slow on the inside. On the outside there is Lexus looking to try and make some places there using the grunt 
of the Lexus coming down to T1. Toyota goes to the inside, tries to the position. He does. Lexus now up into seventh place. The Mitsubishi now coming up the inside into seventh, taking the place away from the Lexus. Moves are happening quicker than we can call them, but in the meantime, Porsche in fifth, Mercedes in fourth as well. Looking back now from the rear wing of the Porsche coming through the S section. You can see just buzzing away in the background. Four cars behind, separated by barely, probably less than a second at the moment, and somehow uh, still all on the track after that very hectic last couple of corners. Well, that was absolutely fantastic from all drivers involved to keep it on the straight and narrow. So much action going on. As you say there, Jimmy, Mitsubishi now trying to attack Toyota as they come into the Degnas for the penultimate time of asking. No moves being made there at the moment. Everybody calming down just a little bit. Meanwhile, the gap at the front, Jimmy, has been in decreasing lap after lap. It's got, it was down to eight tenths of a second between Aston Martin and Renault just a few moments ago, but it's stabilising at about a second, but that has still come down from 3.2 seconds at the start of this race. There is still time for Renault to catch Aston Martin. We thought it would be a done deal for Aston Martin after the first couple of corners, but they had a inherited pretty much a four second lead straight away. But Renault has been chipping away at that ever so slowly. But I think the mistake though, in the last couple of corners, they are now starting to drop off. Now, meanwhile, the battle has been renewed between Mercedes-Benz and Porsche coming from this long left hand the spoon curve. Now, don't go too wide here. Very easy to get the car oversteering on to the Astro turf. Now, Porsche will have the slip screen coming up to 130R. Gradually, gradually pulls into the back of the AMG. The AMG sits in the middle of the road, says, no, thank you. I'm not interested in you passing here. Porsche, I think, airing on the side of Porsche and Sugawara at the wheel of the Porsche. Now looking probably up to the inside of the chicane. Mercedes on the inside, sits there, says, no, no chance. You aren't coming through here, mate, and holds the position for now. Brilliant defensive driving from Mercedes-Benz. Absolutely fantastic stuff from Pedro Marjan. We look at him on the left top of your screen. Behind them, of course, you see Toyota there as well versus Porsche. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. We ride on board with Porsche once again. Sorry, Toyota rather once again trying to attack Porsche. Last lap time it is then. Down towards the first corner. Can Yamanaka-san try and find a way through? He wasn't close enough there. Oh, they're close. There's contact between Porsche and Toyota in turn number two. Toyota on the outside now as we come into the S-Benz. Porsche keeps their position. They keep the line. Thankfully, I think that was pretty fair because otherwise, if they forced their way through, it might have been a bit uh, interesting to see what the stewards would have thought of that. Yes, definitely. Uh, at this point, it seems now is every man for itself. We're on lap five of five. It's the final lap. We have so many cars all together. And now look at the Renault, only half a second behind the Aston Martin and behind them and the Nissan. Mick Kazawa has caught up this lead duo. So this is far from over now. Coming through the second deck now up to the hairpin for the last time of asking. Aston Martin has the advantage now, but only just four tenths of a second now between him and the Renault. Late on the brakes, the Renault coming to the inside down on the front, oh, nice and late. See the Aston really struggling with tyres now, Tom. Well, the only thing that this is going to account for as well is not only points, but also grid position for that final race as well. Jimmy, look at Porsche versus Mercedes as well. They've been running nose to tail lap after lap, and they're still running nose to tail here on the final lap at Suzuka. Through the right hand, and we go sweeping up into the left-handed kink of Spoon in a few moments' time. Porsche go defensive. Mercedes have no way to answer, no way through. The race, though, at the front as they're on the back straight is getting very very hairy between Aston Martin and Renault, but the focus is now on fourth position. Oh, big slide there from Mercedes as well as they try to get on the power. That could be curtains for them. It could be at this point, and that slide has cost him big time because now Porsche has the advantage. Here comes Renault! Oh, the oh, 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 the inside gets to all kinds of loose. Come on, Aston Martin! Renault goes through! Right. Renault goes through! At the final chicane, Aston Martin outbreak themselves, and Renault out of the final corner. Unless it's a drag to the line, they take victory here in race number three. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Koke Lopez on top for Renault. Aston in second, Nissan third. Fourth place is Mercedes Benz. They just hold on ahead of Toyota, Subaru, Mitsubishi, Lexus and Porsche who really lost out on that final lap. A disaster of a last lap for Porsche there. They went from battling for fourth place down to ninth at the chequered flag. Toyota, Chevrolet, BMW down in 12th position right at the very end of that one. But absolutely incredible stuff. Koke Lopez to proving exactly why he is so popular. My goodness me, that was fantastic. No idea, no idea how they all got through to the end of that race, to be honest. <laughs> They're all just uh, going at it for the entire time. We're going to have so many replays to show you. I'm not sure if our editing person behind the scenes is going to have the time to do that. No, I don't think they are. I tell you what, that we were going to look at uh, attacking and defending in a few moments' time over the course of a race. And we're going to be using Renault as a great example of that as well. We can look at that final lap. You only need to see exactly what they were doing, exactly where Coke Lopez was able to take advantage, really, of others' misfortune.
did an incredible job. You got a feel for Aston Martin, though, but almost gifted the win, but not quite able to hold it. The gap was four seconds after the first lap, but just came down gradually, gradually. And in the end, it was a mistake from pressure from the Aston Martin driver, which pretty much meant that was Kern. Yeah, absolutely. And I've just been told in my ear that there's an investigation going on between Porsche and Mercedes at the moment as well for contact on that final lap of the race. So let's see what the outcome of that is going to be. We'll delay what we're going to be doing just for a few moments of a time. Let's have a look, though, in the meantime, at the replays of the course of that race. Jimmy, you call this one. I've got to get the breath back. Yeah, as you can see, pretty much uh, Nissan went into T1, didn't quite get the corner right, as you're seeing, and everyone just followed him off into the background. There was carnage. And uh, our pole sitter, who we thought would be pretty much a, a sure shooter to win this thing, was off straight away. Lots of drivers doing the same things. He just got onto that very slippy Astra turf on the left. BMW, Mercedes, Corvette as well. And uh, round and not really the way you want to start a race at Suzuka. Oh, no. Nope, certainly not. You can see there. Mick is out. Team Radio. Oh, no, he says. And look at that. Well, thankfully, there was no blue language there. That could have been a far bit worse than it was. You can see, meanwhile, this was Mercedes versus Renault on the opening lap. Renault sending it down the inside of that chicane. Not the first time or the last time that they were going to do that over the course of the race either. A little bit robust on the way through there, but a, a decent position made nonetheless. And here is Toyota. position from them. You see Porsche and Nissan both trying up the inside of the Mercedes. You didn't quite see the thing uh, coming. Yamanaka, um, there being the opportunist in the Toyota, takes a Porsche, and Porsche just went from fourth to sixth, just like that. Yeah, very absolutely. Easy. But look at Toyota as well. Look at that car control from Yamanaka. -san. He did very well not to send that straight to the scene of the accident. Meanwhile, this was the last lap. This was the crucial talking point, and it was a mistake from Aston Martin. They were defensive. They outbreak themselves. You saw the break this glowing red in that final corner. That was enough for Renault to get through. Coque Lopez on top in race number three. Absolutely fantastic. I tell you what, it doesn't get better than that in terms of racing drama, does it, Jimmy? I mean, what, last lap, last corner? <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> Easy. It's, exactly, it's brilliant. <laughs> fantastic stuff. Great stuff from Coque Lopez. Great stuff for Renault as well because they've had a bit of a difficult time over the course of this one. It'll help them in terms of where they are in the standings. Double points, of course, though, for the final in a few moments' time. Driver changes, tyres... We've got all to talk about in a few minutes, but it's going to be so exciting going into this one. You, you can't help but think what would happen if Renault didn't spin out of the first race. Mm. They'd be a lot stronger than they are now in the series, wouldn't they? Well, exactly, but that's the, the converse, of course, is true for BMW. What's going to happen now that they spun out and finish in 12th position at the end of that one? They, let's not forget, after two races, were tied on points at the top of the times. Well, top we'll, of the order, rather. Well, we'll see in a minute anyway, which is a good thing. Luckily, <laughs> we, luckily I haven't got to do the maths, because we'll be here for quite a while if it yeah, was me doing it. Quite, exactly. <laughs> I'll say, what time are we on tomorrow for the Nations <laughs> Cup? Let's uh, keep an eye on that. But I'll tell you what, that was just fantastic. There was so much going on, though, over the course of that race. It's really hard to sort of kind of pinpoint what exactly was so spectacular, what exactly was so exciting. There was drama at the start. There was a lot of drama in the midfield in the middle, a lot of change of positions. And we thought that, really, that Aston Martin were going to romp away with that one. 3.2 seconds. Let's not forget that they had at the start of that race, at the end of it, of course, as we saw, came down to the last lap. Well, we'll tell you, all, we'll show you guys something from a team that did everything right in that race. That's Renault. We had mm. a fantastic attack and defend from them. So we have uh, one of the behind here. Now, this was one of their first overtakes. You see, it gets it set up very nice and early, goes wider on 130R, puts himself alongside the Mercedes, and nice and easy all the way through. So you see that that's how a Renault driver was through in race three. Well, that's a good example of attacking there, Jimmy, mm. but race number two is where we saw Renault defending. This was some brilliant defensive driving against Porsche. You saw him here going towards the inside. This was down into the hairpin, a very crucial overtaking opportunity. Side by side they went, they pushed Porsche out wide, put the car in exactly the right position there, and that was enough for Renault to hold themselves off and hold that position. Brilliant stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, really, really great defending. And the squeeze from the Renault there, that's the important thing. You're kind of pushing the car as far as possible uh, on, on their line without disrupting their line mm. and making the corner as tight as possible for them whilst giving yourself uh, the, as much space as you can. So, Well, they all did absolutely brilliant yeah. stuff. I'm just hearing in my ear, by the way, that Mercedes-Benz has actually given a five-second penalty <laughs> after that race there, Jimmy, for unfair contact during the course of that race. Not entirely sure what incident it was. Maybe we can highlight it a bit later on mm. in the broadcast. Lots of things going on at the moment. Now we've got the confirmation of that, though. We will be able to bring you the standings momentarily and give you an idea as to who is lining up where ahead of that final. And let's just talk about that final there, Jimmy, very, very quickly, because, of course, it is a completely different kettle of fish. It's an endurance race, really. Two different driver changes two or three separate compounds of tyres that the drivers have got to run over the course of it as well, and lots of different strategies that are going to come into play. Yeah, and of course, it's the final two, so tensions are running high, which means it's very easy to have a little bit of contact with someone making a mistake. And of course, if you do end up getting a penalty, then um, no, that, that can really put a dampener on your race. Of course, in GT Sport, we have, or in these live events, we have the penalty line, which has now actually been introduced into the game. It was something that came from live events and then went into the GT Sport mode for you guys at home. 
And if you get a penalty, you get five seconds. So right, you've got a five-second penalty. That means when you get to the penalty line next time by, you're going to have to slow down. Everyone's going to go flying past you. Absolute nightmare for that. Uh, but in the meantime, what we're going to do now is we'll go over to Julia with an interview for our winners from Race Free. Yes, I'm here with Team Reno and, of course, Jorge Lopez, who just won that final race. How do you feel? Well, it's just an amazing, an amazing feeling uh, overall after the, the first race because we were unlucky. Our mate uh, had a good pace and he was battling and fighting for the podium. Uh, so, yes, uh, this, this is uh, the kind of things that can happen in, in every race. So that uh, this makes the races very exciting. Mm -hmm. And we enjoyed a lot uh, with Fagus race and then with, with mine, I enjoyed a lot uh, while I was driving. And for me, it has been an amazing experience uh, to, to come back from, from sixth to, to first. And yes, just amazing. Uh, I, I want to say thank you to all, my, to all my, my supporters in Spain. And yeah, thank you. So, how do, I mean, obviously, we've got the final race and everything can change because it's double points. What's going to be your strategy going in? Do you want to guys take What are you going to do? Yeah, well, well, I think we'll try to be uh, as smooth as possible with the car. Uh, it's uh, very uh, difficult with the tire wear, and, but uh, yeah, we'll try our best, basically. Well, good luck. But I, one thing I will say, I feel like the Manufacture Series, you have to have a good, like, kind of, like your brothers, right? You have to kind of work together as a team, that's important. Uh, but not just here, but also apparently online, because uh, you've been having a little bit of a, a chat with um, Lloyd. Is that right? Hi, mate. Are you there? <laughs> Some good, um, look, oh look, missing, making me miss you already, yeah. with some little hearts. Yeah, I, mean, I, miss, I miss him too, uh, because uh, this, was, this was one of the coolest guys on, on, in Monaco, and I really enjoyed to, to spend a lot of time with him. Oh, well, look, thank you ever so much, guys. Good luck going into that final race. Um, I believe we actually have some uh, other tweets uh, to read that have actually uh, come from some of you guys at home, I believe, if that's correct. Could bring them up, that'd be lovely. Ah, here we go. Toyota for the Supra, of course. Oh yes, of course, because we were asking you which squad you would like to go with in the Manufacturer Series. Porsche would be my manufacturer's choice, one of my favorite manufacturers in reality, with the Cayman GT4 Club Sport being my favorite car for GR4. And a McLaren for the new F1 GTR, or Porsche for the 911 RSR. So there's lots, uh, lots of different uh, Different choices there. Everyone's got their kind of favorite cars, obviously. And um, why don't we have a quick look now at the timeline just of what's going to happen in this very, very last and final race. So, of course, each one of the drivers has done one race. The final race is all three drivers having to switch. This becomes a little bit tricky because you actually have to get in and out uh, of the actual rig itself. I think we should just get it underway and find out exactly who's going to be our Manufacturer Series Cup champion. Let's chuck it over to Tom and Jimmy. Yeah, thank you very much indeed there, Julia. Welcome back to the uh, commentary position. Before we get that underway, though, some crucial housekeeping to do to find out really who lines up where on this uh, on the point standings ahead of the uh, race. Let's have a look at the race results, though, after that race at Suzuka. It was incredible after that penalty, of course, for Mercedes as well. This is how it sits. Of course, it was Coque Lopez who took victory ahead of Marshall in the Aston Martin. Mick Hazal there ended up in uh, third position in the Nissan. Mike Zoka, of course, in the... Uh, BMW, as we saw, right down the order. Yamanaka-san, Miyazono-san there in fourth and fifth position. Yoshida-san as well as Regard, Sugarawa, Marzan, and then Rubelar. Lots of, lots of drama over the course of that one there, Jimmy. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. And uh, let's see how it's going to affect the overall point standings ahead of this final race. Yeah, well, whilst uh, that's being plotted up, and I do not uh, envy the guys who are doing <laughs> that, we have a fantastic feature for you guys on braking. Let's see how that can improve your driving at home. I usually create reference for the braking zones, but when, when sometimes there is tie wear, you have to adapt. In regards to braking, I try to use braking references as much as possible, as that's how real race car drivers would use those markers. A lot of people think that uh, the braking moment is only to, to have a reference and then brake, uh, full brake and turn. It's not only that. You have to be very careful because it depends on the, on the speed that you have before the braking point. You have to brake earlier or later. I brake with my left foot because I found that it is faster reaction time. I know some guys that brake with right foot. It's 
honestly amazing. I don't know how they are so fast to do it. It's very interesting how Kokobun uses only like right foot and he's actually very precise and very, very quick. Yeah. My style to, to braking, it's the, the left foot braking. You can control the acceleration and braking at the same time. But the disadvantage is that you tend to overuse the, the fuel comparing to the right foot braking. You have to really, really be careful when you have worn tires to react the, the best way, to brake a bit earlier and to place the car the best way in the corner the first time you try to enter it. Play on the brakes into the middle section, Cody Lovkowski up into second position. Well, there we are then. Brilliant stuff after that one. We can see our commentators here. Here's Portugal as well. Francisco Gomez, uh, Francisco Miller rather, and Gonzalo Gomez. Get them the right order. You can see Donald and Fabian there. Andrea and Emilio for Italy. And what about the uh, German boys there? Mikel and Florian Strauss, of course, former GT Academy winner there as well. It's a proper royalty we've got here tonight, haven't we? Very competitive here. See, why don't let me beat his times and we go and have a go on the, on the rigs out here. But, um, <laughs> now, finally, Tom, we have our standings for you as they are after race three. And as you can see, Nissan taking the lead. Yeah, absolutely right. Apologies earlier on, by the way. I said that Mick Gazelle was driving the BMW. Of course, he was driving the Nissan, and Nissan are the top of the order. 28 points. Uh, they have four points in advantage over Aston Martin. BMW also in touching distance as well as Renault. Subaru not too far away as well. It could all go either way. Double points. Porsche, Mercedes-Benz a little bit trailing off. Honda, Toyota, Lexus, Mitsubishi, Chevrolet. A lot more work to do for them, though. Final race, though, Jimmy, then. It's double points. It's driver changes. It's strategy. It's everything we need all in one go. It is going to be so exciting. Let's have a look, though, at the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia. That is the scene of our world, oh, sorry, of our final, rather, I should say, for World Tour 1 here in Paris. The circuit of Barcelona, Catalonia, then. Well, I lived in Barcelona for two years, so I know the circuit quite well. And uh, as you can see here, 4.6 kilometers. It is modified in 2007 to include that final chicane up there in sector number three. Lots of different corners. You've got for the turn one of Renault um, up through Elf and then into uh, Campster, which, of course, is turn number nine. Such an important part of the lap, that turn number nine. Lots of undulation, really, going up and down the uh, circuit as well, as you can see. 29.6 meters in total for the drivers to contend with up and down this circuit. Lots and lots of drama. It's going to be very interesting to see how they get on. So, Jimmy, this is how they line up. These are the cars that will be competing in Group 3 machines. Yep, T1, of course, the big overtaking spot down, I think, there. Uh, very long straight down to there. You see fuel consumption at four times, tyre wear at times 10, and most importantly, tyre selection, racing hard, medium and soft, all being used in this race. 17 laps here, so it's a longer race than we're used to. Uh, around about 40 minutes, we think it will be, if we if our math is correct. Again, we're relying a lot on maths here. <laughs> <laughs> Which is rubbish, because I was terrible at maths at school. I don't know about you. But anyway, this is going to be very exciting. Strategy is going to be perhaps mm. the most important part of this race, isn't Definitely. it? It's going to be when the drivers come in. We've got three different compounds of tyres, medium hard, medium, hard, and soft, of course. And you can see the tyres behind me. It's fuel strategy uh, and tyre uh, sorry, tyre consumption. Tyre strategy, rather. Let's get that out. And fuel <laughs> consumption. Uh, tyre strategy, as we said, is going to be crucially important. Three different compounds of tyres, mm. three different drivers, so the drivers will each be on a different compound of tyres. So let's see how they're going to fare. What do we reckon? Well, I think what we usually see is the, uh, the faster driver is allowed to have the racing soft, which, as you can see on your screen right now, is the fastest tyre. 1.5 seconds a lap faster than the medium and 2.3 seconds a lap faster than the hard tyre. But, of course, a racing hard tyre lasting three more laps than we expect the soft. Now, when you get to about five laps in that racing soft tyre, Cliff, the car becomes pretty much undrivable, so it's very important to be on the right tyre at the right time. Yeah, absolutely right. Fuel consumption then is very important. 17 laps, tank capacity of 100 litres on these Group 3 machines. They'll get about nine laps there and thereabouts with a full tank of fuel. As you can see, the refueling speed there, three litres per second. About 70 litres is needed during the pit stop uh, for the race as well to get uh, enough fuel to get through those different particular stints. So it is going to be very interesting to see what the teams will be doing, where and whereabouts they'll be pitting, and when those tyres will go off the cliff, of course, it's going to be different for all the teams. They might start on mediums, they might start on hards, they might start on softs. So let's see how they're going to fare. The final is about to get underway for the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia, for the Manufacturer Series.
It is the 2019 FIA Gran Turismo Championships. It is World Tour 1 here in Paris, and it is the final for the Manufacturer Series at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. Renault with David Galinsky starting on pole position. He is their starting driver for the team. Aston Martin and Christopher Marshall alongside them on that front row of the grid. Row number two, the Nations Cup champion of 2018, Igor Fraga in the Nissan. The Toyota of Yamanaka-san in the GR Racing Supra Concept in fourth place. Row three, Ika Kokalainen in the Subaru machine. Quiet weekend they've had so far. They're just ahead of Yoshida-san in the Mitsubishi. In seventh place, second half of the grid, Lexus, our manufacturer champions from last year. Not a great uh, series for them so far, but looking to try and make up some points the best they can. Then down in eighth is Gonzaga in the Porsche. Favourite going into this, but not quite the uh, race for them so far. Marjan in the AMG in ninth position and down in tenth is Arai there in the Honda representing his home manufacturer country. And then down on the last row is Lewis Bentley in the Chevy Corvette. And last but certainly not least is a BMW. Tatsuma Shima in the car. They're looking to try and make up as many places as possible on the first few laps of this race. Well, they're starting all the way down just before turn at number 10, so they've got a long run to go before they end up going over the timing line. As you said, Jimmy, 17 laps there as well, and a different compound of tyres for the teams to start on as well. You can see Renault, the pole setters there. They're on the harder compound of tyres, but interestingly, Aston Martin on the medium set. So maybe opting to go somewhere down the middle. They're not quite sure where to start. Very worth noting that Mitsubishi and Chevy have both gone for the soft tyre compound, meaning that these guys are going to be very fast at the start, but you could argue they're going have to make their way through the field so they might not get the full use of the tyre as they are trying to make up positions. Well, through that chicane they will come and then out of the final corner to get the race underway very, very shortly indeed. So, it is go time then. Who is going to be crowned as the winner of the Manufacturer Series here in Paris at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia for our final? It is go time then. Lights on, and we are ready to go racing. The Manufacturer Series final here at the Circuit of Barcelona, Catalonia is underway, and it's Renault that get away, predictably, of course, very well indeed. Aston Martin there in second position. Will the gap come down before they reach that first corner? It's a very crucial overtaking opportunity. Is anybody going to think about a move? Renault go defensive down towards turn one. Aston Martin, they're not quite close enough to launch an attack in the first corner there. Everybody lining pretty much a stern. Chevrolet and Honda swapping positions, though, in 10th and 11th. Worth noting, of course, so Aston Martin is very, very fast in a straight line. Being on the medium tyres, he needs to get by that Renault as soon as possible. Every moment spent behind uh, the Renault is going to be time lost on the faster tyre compound. Look how close they are right now. This hand in the background as well. The top three separated by not very much at all. Mitsubishi moving up into fifth position on Subaru there, up the inside of T number four. Great move there. Now we come down to the hairpin. Slowest part of the course. Aston Martin there looking up the inside. Will they have the drive coming now down? The hill, I don't think they do. Renault sits on the middle of a circuit and keeps Aston behind just for now. Well, a softer compound of tyres, of course, on that. Aston Martin will give him a bit more initial grip than the harder compound will give Renault at the moment. Of course, the flip side of that, the converse, is that Renault will have a longer duration in theory, so we'll be able to stay out for longer and perhaps do the overcut on Aston Martin. But let's see how things go. Look at Toyota coming under a lot of pressure now from Mitsubishi down towards turn number 10. And Toyota come under pressure and come unstuck from fourth place as well. Mitsubishi on the softer tyres, as you would begin to expect in the opening stages of this race, very fast and now into fourth place. And that's what they have to do. They have to make the absolute most of being on the fastest tyre out there. And already having a look up the inside of the Nissan, not quite close enough for that. Of course, Igor Fraga at the World of Nissan, a very experienced driver in the Grand Chris Moto is not going to be easy this way. Now, watch out for this. Watch this Aston Martin down the straight here in the sixth bend. Nissan too, both fairly quick in the straight line, but Igor Fraga really struggling there to get out of the last corner, and the Mitsubishi absolutely glued to the back of that GTR, but it doesn't matter. Look, look how fast the GTR is in straight line, and here comes Aston Martin round the outside there, off the Renault, drives past like it's standing still. Nissan wants to go as well, dives to the inside of the Renault, and just like that, the Renault loses only one position, but another one. Hang on, what happened there? This thing got a little bit sideways coming out of T1, and Mitsubishi on the soft tyres just goes flying through. Thank you very much, he says. Well, very impressive stuff indeed. Porsche now getting ahead of Lexus for seventh position, a little bit further back, and look at Nissan, really under pressure from Toyota. Mitsubishi putting the pressure on Renault as well. They're up into second place. Toyota trying to get the better of Nissan as well. Side by side through the right-hander they go. They're going to have the outside line, though, going down in towards the left-hander of Seat, which follows. Is there an opportunity to get past?
last for Nissan. Is there an opportunity for Toyota to hold the line? Oh, it's very close. They're side by side and all the way around the outside wow. for Toyota. That is absolutely fantastic driving from Yamanaka-san behind the wheel of that car. There aren't many times you overtake the Nations Cup champion around the outside and that's one of them fantastic boot by yamanaka and if anyone's going to make it we said it earlier it would be yamanaka the king of spectacular driving and now we come down to the hairpin you see Igor fraga looking to the inside late on the brakes there is he going to make the corner yes he does hugs the inside now he's going to have a bit of a more difficult exit because of that Toyota just stays ahead a little bit of contact though and fraga gets back off the pedal seems to allow the toyota the position which is probably the best uh, move for now in the meantime mitsubishi on the soft tire is starting to catch up to Aston Martin, so we might have a battle for our lead before too long. Yeah, absolutely right. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of drama going on further back. Lexus, sick as parrots, down there in 10th place. Renault missing the first apex of that chicane there as well. That might compromise them a little bit. Look at how close the group is, though, from second all the way down, going to nearly eighth position, ninth position as well. Look at Renault going defensive as well. Look at the lead nearly about to change because Mitsubishi are in the slipstream. They're trying to get ahead of Aston Martin. We ride on board with Mitsubishi. They're going to go down the inside of the first corner. So much later on the brakes, those racing sides off tyres and look at Toyota trying to get ahead of Renault now wow that's close brilliant move there from Yamanaka-san elbows out from him no holes barred at all and he's into the podium positions at the moment on lap three and in the background the Corvette trying to go around the outside of a Subaru not going to quite manage that unfortunately but Nissan and Renault they are not done yet Renault on the outside listen to the inside they out the brakes goes Igor Fraga pass he goes I think can the Renault hold it around the outside a little bit of side to side contact there watch your mirrors lads you'll need those for later on the Renault just about keeps it there and now who have the inside the slow left hand, I think that is position defended, but Fraga trying to run it round the outside early on the power, but no, Renault there and still ahead of a Nissan just for now. Still side by side they come, Renault on the inside, Nissan on the outside, oh, and Yamanaka-san, sorry, not Yamanaka, the Porsche rather, I should say, goes into the back of the Nissan through the left-handers of turn seven and turn eight, Nissan down the inside of Renault, up into fourth place once again, and Nissan, oh, and Renault are out wide, here come Porsche, they're going to take advantage, down towards turn ten, look at Corvette involved there as well. Three wide down to the corner. Corvette on the outside. Porsche get out wow, of the Corvette. Wow, absolutely. Oh, oh, no, they slide. There's contact. They're into the side of the Renault. Renault on the inside. Nissan on the inside of Corvette. Corvette hung out to try. This is an absolutely brilliant race. Oh, oh Corvette goes off. Nissan goes off. Mercedes Benz are off as well. Absolutely huge drama on lap number three. I have no idea what happened there, Tom, in the background. Just looked up for a second. I saw the Corvette be absolutely shoveled off the road. And that's pretty much going to be their race said and done now. Those soft tyres are almost done at this point. But meanwhile, we'll come back to this until we can get a replay. Renault having to defend from the Porsche in the background, going to the inside there, hugging the inside line forces the Porsche to go to the outside, moves back across to try and squeeze him as much as possible, but the Porsche runs it around the outside, past the Renault, of course, Porsche with a slight tyre advantage there, so it seemed like a bit of a done deal. Renault now starting to go backwards on this hard compound of tyre. Well, that was fantastic. Let's have a look and try and piece together what happened here. So you've got three wide going in there. You've got Renault on the inside, Nissan on the inside now of Corvette, Porsche in the background there as well. And it was just a concertina effect, I think, really, just running out of room. I think what happened there, I think Lexus was the cause of that. Really? Uh, so they came in, I think they came in sideways contact of the Nissan, which then meant sideways contact of the Corvette and both, of course, Corvette and Nissan being sent off into the gravel trap to think what might have been. Uh, meanwhile, Toyota up into third after all that. Uh, here is Porsche in fourth position after taking the Renault. You see Lexus now are glued to the back of the Renault. Uh, Lexus do have the tire advantage on the mediums, but we're now getting up to the point, Tom, probably in about another lap or so's time, where we are going to start seeing uh, some, uh, some pit stops. So we have an uh, instant being investigated. Nissan, Corvette and Porsche. So maybe the stewards have the uh, the luxury of having a few more camera angles than us. Look at the side by side in the background between Mercedes Benz and Corvette there as well. Look at Subaru getting up the inside of Renault for sixth position. That is absolutely brilliant stuff from Subaru taking advantage where Renault faltered into the right hand. And they go Subaru now in sixth, Renault into seventh place. Yeah, a, a, a great move by those guys in front there. Here is Renault, uh, unfortunately, just uh, suffering on those hard tyres somewhat, having to give way to the guys in the medium. But 
importantly, he did hold them up. Yeah, he did. He certainly did. You're absolutely right. Look at Subaru. They're going a little bit wide, a little bit squirrely through that final corner. That's not going to help them. That's not going to help them gaining any time. Mitsubishi, meanwhile, they're out in front. You'd expect that, though. They've got a 2.3 second advantage over Aston Martin. That, of course, is thanks really to those soft compound of tyres that they are using at the moment. But in a moment, in a lap or two, Jimmy, they're going to be falling off a cliff at a big rate of knots. So right now, our live point rank is on the right on your screen. If the race finished now, Aston Martin would be our champions of this event with Nissan. Of course, our leaders going in would be down uh, in third with Mitsubishi going from six points to 30 uh, with this uh, win, if the race ended now. But of course, it is definitely not going to. And we have two penalties that have been awarded there, pointing out there, Tom, we have Subaru and Corvette. So Corvette being attributed some blame there for that crash earlier on. Certainly seems so. Race Direction have uh, had a quick look at the replays there and deemed, as you say, Jimmy, that uh, they were at fault. So let's keep an eye out and see what effect that will have over the course of their race. Lap 5 out of 17, drivers on soft tyres are going to be really, really struggling very, very soon indeed. Mitsubishi and Chevrolet, the tiles, cars that are on those softer compound of tyres at the moment, and it will surely be time for the pit stops. Meanwhile, Lexus now, Jimmy, inside the top five, running all on their own at the moment. You can see the penalty there as they come past the penalty point for Subaru over that penalty line. Half a second was the penalty that he was awarded. And there you go, losing a little bit of time, but not fortunately for them, losing any positions. If anything, then I just lost, lost a little bit of time, which you said to the car behind, so not really much of a bet there. Now, Mitsubishi, lap five. This is where we expect the car, the tyre to go off. Will they peel into the pit lane? No, they go round again on the soft tyre there. So, interesting, they're trying to make that soft tyre last as long as possible. I wonder how much life it has left in it. Well, it's interesting you say that, Jimmy, because I've been keeping an eye on their gap. It was 2.7 seconds the last time they went around. It's up to 3.7 now, so they've been pulling out a second over that last lap. The tyre's still seemingly in good enough condition for Mitsubishi to carry on. However, Renault Bolt, they're on the hard tyre. Interesting strategy choice there, because no one else is following suit. Renault, the first driver, into the pits. They will be changing their driver. Of course, it was David Galinsky who started, and Fabian Dudelec will be the new driver behind the wheel of that machine. So I think what's happening here is the other teams have seen just how well the soft tyre is doing and how competitive it's staying even after uh, you know, five laps of this race. So they're coming in, getting rid of those uh, hard tyres and going on to a softer compound. You have to remember, the harder tyre is the slowest tyre of the lot, so the least time you can spend on that tyre, the better. It might seem counterintuitive, but you might want to even try and make the soft go longer than the hard tyre. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, let's see what happens. You can see Honda into the pit lane there, first driver change of the time. And of course, it was uh, Arai who was in the car. Now Diego Rubilar takes over driving duties behind the wheel of that NSX Group 3 machine. Renault back out onto track. 10th position for them they are at the moment, but of course, still plenty of time for things to be changing. Lap 6 out of 17 that we are on. Still one more mandatory pit stop, one more compound of tyres for those drivers to be using. Mitsubishi, surely, they're going to be hemorrhaging grip now. It's going to have, surely have gone off a cliff. It's 4.6 seconds, though, that they've got over to Aston Martin. This is absolutely inspired from Mitsubishi. If they hadn't had such a difficult time in the previous races there, Jimmy, they're going to be ruining, really, what might have been. It's been a fantastic drive for Yoshida so far, who you just saw in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Now, this is when, when the car is like this, you have to be an absolute saint on the throttle pedal. And now I think Yoshida finally relented, saying, yep, the tyres are gone now, I'm pitting in, and that will be the end of a fantastic first stint there for Shogun Yoshida. He's now going on to the medium tyre, and it looks like, uh, let's see, on uh, who's that going in there? That's Adams going into the car now, the British driver. So let's see what he can do on the uh, the medium compound of tyre. Yeah, James Adams and also the top guys also following suit. So James Adams in the wheel of the Toyota. Mitsubishi coming into the pits, as you can see. Driver change having already been made. Fuel being put on board as well. Soft over to the medium compound of tyre. Look at the strategies you can see with the drivers in the pit lane there as well. Lots of teams changing from mediums to hards or softs to hards. And you can see a couple of drivers going onto the medium tyres. Nissan onto the medium tyres. Mercedes-Benz also following suit there as well. Fuel goes into the car as well. Yeah, well, of course, the, uh, it is a uh, consumption of fuel as well. So you have to make sure your car is topped up. You saw what happened when that doesn't happen. Uh, Igor Fraga, of course, last time out in the manufacturer running out of fuel. Heartbreaking on the last lap. Hopefully you won't see a repeat of that today. So Mitsubishi out there now on the medium tyre. Aston Martin four seconds behind on the harder compound of tyres. So they'll be falling back somewhat now. This is where Mitsubishi need to push because in their last stint, and of course, they're going to try and make this medium stint go as long as possible. They're going to be on the hard compound of tyres. That's a very interesting strategy call there from Renault because they're trying to go to the end of the medium compound of tyres. They've just made two pit stops in the space of three laps, Jimmy. That's very interesting indeed. I've just noticed that they've gone from the hard to the medium compound of tyre. They came in just a few laps ago. So they're either doing a very short middle stint, want to get shot of those soft tyres and run to the end on the mediums. But that's a very interesting, very bold strategy call as well. 
So, again, another up, uh, update of our live point rankings if it finished as it was. Aston Martin would take the victory with Nissan second, Mitsubishi in third. But meanwhile, we have a fight on trap between Mercedes Benz and Corvette, both on the harder compound of tyre now. So it's level play, even playing field in terms of tyre compound. But behind them, Nissan on the mediums. And they need to make up speed as quick as possible. We now have Ryoto Kokiburn in the car. And we saw how fast he was earlier in the Group 4 Nissan. Can you repeat that result today in the Group 3 Nissan? Corvette lunging to the inside of the Mercedes. Caught the Mercedes driver napping, I think, and went straight through. He just did not expect that whatsoever. Yeah, absolutely right. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Oh, and look at that as well, because showing a wheel, Mercedes on the inside of Nissan. Bit of contact between them as they come through the right-hander on this final sector of the lap, but just about keeping it clean enough. There's some very forceful driving going on here, Jimmy. Yeah, let's see now what Nissan has a straight line. Corvette, all sorts of sideways there coming out of the chicane. Very easy to do. Now, look, that slowed them down coming onto the straight. And we're now on board with Ryota Kokibun. You can see him in the top left-hand corner. He's often to go to the inside. Goes free wide. He splits a pair of them. Through goes Ryota Kokibun. The Asia Oceana regional champion takes two for one on the straight. Will he be able to keep it into, the, into T1? Yes, he does. And while doing so, they all close up on Subaru in front. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant stuff indeed, as you say there, Jimmy. Look at that side by side between Corvette and between Mercedes-Benz for ninth and tenth position in this race as well. Well, it is anybody's guess as to who, how this is going to pan out. Look at Nissan versus Subaru down in towards the right-hander of turn number four. Is Nissan going to get ahead? Are they going to? They're side by side. JT Loro in the wheel of the Subaru, and he's trying to defend, but he's not able to do so. You can see there as well on the top right-hand corner of your screen, investigation underway between Mercedes and Chevrolet for causing an incident with another car. Now, what I think we're going to see now, because this is what Nissan need to do, they need to get into clean air as quick as possible and put in quick laps. So I think we're going to see a short middle stint now, Tom. Uh, they'll, uh, they'll come in, they'll use his medium tyres for a little bit and then put out Mick Hazel on the soft tyres at the end to go, right, take it home, mate, see what you can do. And we saw how quick he's been on the soft tyres in the past. Well, we've seen how quick Mick Hazel has been in general, yeah, really, yeah, haven't we? Let's be honest. <laughs> he has been absolutely on fire when he's got his composure and he is going to be really hoping that he can try and pull something out of the bag. So it is still Mitsubishi on the medium compound of tyres that lead the way. Interesting strategy called reverse of some teams because, of course, they're going to be on the slowest compound of tyre, the harder compound of tyre at the end of this one, but they do have a 7.9 second advantage so far over the other drivers. You can see Team BMW here with Tsunashima san and Rubilar. You can see Mike Zocha, the wheel uh, behind the wheel of that car at the moment, the German driver just trying to attack JT Loro in the Subaru. Interesting to see how this one will fare. Of course, Loro on the harder compound of tyres, as you can see on the left-hand side of your screen. BMW on the medium compound, so there should be a pace advantage for the BMW over the, Mitsu, over the Subaru at this stage and ne nearly going down the inside and going down the inside, in fact, at turn number one. So BMW versus Subaru and Subaru wins it. Uh, sorry, BM Subaru loses out. BMW gets up into seventh position. Subaru not too quick in a straight line, it seems. A big weakness down the straight. And every time we've seen a car behind the Subaru, it's uh, been behind it by the time we get down to T1. But anyway, another place gained for BMW on that medium compound of tyre. Nissan seemed to be closing in somewhat on Lexus as well. Uh, the head of the field, though, Mitsubishi. Now, they are eight seconds ahead, but they have the higher tyre to come. And we've seen this about two, two seconds a lap slower than the rest of the cars out there right now. And you're seeing a live point ranking update with Nissan clawing their way back to through, uh, through the field. They are making up points, but still importantly, behind Aston Martin. Yeah, absolutely right. I think this is going to be very interesting because I think Toyota have shot themselves in the foot a little bit here, Jimmy, because they're on the softer compound of tyres in the middle of the race, which is a bit of a bizarre one. Generally, you do that either at the start or the end, and it doesn't seem to be working for Toyota. That gap is still increasing to Aston Martin in second position. You say that, I think it's been, it's been going the other way, Tom. I think you're looking at the wrong, wrong thing there. It's, because it's been actually uh, decreasing. Ah, right, you um, are, sorry. No, you are inclined to correct. That's my eyes so, deceiving um, me. Basically, oh, I will come back to that in a second, but Mercedes-Benz and Subaru side by side. The Merc driver's been a little bit rough so far, but uh, nice and easy pass there. And there goes Subaru you losing yet another position. What I was going to say, Tom, is that counter to your point, uh, maybe using it in the middle of the race doesn't give you any kind of fighting ability towards the end. But if you've got a clear track, you're putting in quick laps, you're still gaining that time. Yeah, always nice to hear the other side of the argument. You're quite right. You can see Nissan on the left-hand side of your screen. They've got a penalty at the moment there as well. So that could potentially be a bit disastrous for Nissan in sixth position. Don't forget Mick Hazal, of course, he's going to be going onto the soft compound of tyres. He'll be the last driver in that car at the very end of this race. And let's see what he's going to be able to do. What about Subaru versus Mercedes once again? Then the same old story as we were talking about a lap or so ago. 
through the right hander of turn number one, flicking it through to the left as we ride on board with Subaru at the moment. Lap 10 out of 17, we're on here at the circuit, the Barcelona, Catalonia, and still all to play for. It's still at the moment as it stands, Aston Martin that will be crowned the Manufacturer Series winners here of World Tour number one. But it's all set to change. Let's see what will happen. Lots of teams, lots of drivers going to be going on to the softer compound of tyres right at the very end. And they're, of course, going to have the information of uh, the other teams that started on the softer compound of tyres. They're going to know that potentially, if they look after their tyres, they might be able to get six laps out of them as opposed to five at the very end of this race, Jimmy. So, yes, I, mean, I think we'll have to see if that is possible or not. Meanwhile, Nissan uh, is about to serve their penalty. Only 0.5 of a second, so it shouldn't harm them too much in the grand scheme of things. But of course, they had been captain lessons up until now. 1.3 seconds before the penalty. Now, of course, now up to about two seconds there. That's just how much it hurts you to accelerate there. So, uh, a little bit of a uh, blow from this end, but nothing I don't think they cannot overcome. And they have been catching Lexus. The gap originally was about four seconds. It's now down to two, so they have half that into the last part of my Meanwhile, Toyota also gaining on Aston Martin at the head of the field. Only a little bit, though. It seems it's uh, going up and down. I, I expect them to gain a little bit quicker than they are, but they're not too far off now being in the sixth group. Meanwhile, these guys, Mitsubishi, out in first 10 second gap, even with switching to the medium, uh, the hard compound attire for the end of the race. It's looking good for them. It really is. They've pulled an absolute blinder of a strategy here for Mitsubishi, and they did really what they needed to do in the opening stages, as you were saying earlier on, Jimmy. They were able to pull out a good enough of an advantage over the rest of the field. They didn't start on pole position, let's not forget. They started way down the order, but they were able to get past people very, very quickly. Meanwhile, Honda now into the pits. Renault following suit as well. That's the final stop for Renault. So both drivers going on to different compounds of tyres. Renault going on to the softer compound of tyres, whereas Honda going on to the softer compound of tyres. So uh, it's going to be an interesting strategy call. Do we think that might be a bit too soon, Jimmy? Because there's still six or so laps to the end of this race. I'd say now, I think this lap is the window to start going on the soft tyre to make sure it gets to the end of the race. But of course, if you are in front of someone, then at least you can defend. If, if, if you're chasing someone on a, on a, on a ruined tyre, there's not really much you can do. But if you're in front, you can at least make your car as wide as possible. Speaking of that, that's what's going to be the Lexus is going to be trying to do now because we have the, the Nissan has caught up after that penalty. We to a in the car for Nissan at the moment. And we're coming up the uh, very fast right hand. Uh, they have a tyre advantage here for Nissan, so they should get a bit of a better exit, but they don't. Great exit there from the Lexus driver. Will they be close enough to make a move down to the hairpin? No, a bit too far back from my mind, but still that gap has definitely come down. Again, that was four seconds when they were able to the car. It's now down to what you can see on screen. So through it to the left and then the right hand they go here at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. I'll tell you what, the tension here is palpable at Paris, at the venue, the Pavillon Gabriel is the venue where we are in Paris and it is absolutely electric performance. Nissan on the attack against Lexus as well. Aston Martin into the pits, Toyota also into the box as well. Soft tyres for Aston Martin, medium tyres for Toyota. Lexus going into the pits there as well from the harder compound of tyre. They're going to be switching those up for a set of softer uh, boots as well. A lot of teams going onto the softer rubber, as you can see, towards the end of this one. But Toyota going onto the medium compound there. I think Nissan just made a mistake. Really? I, I really do think they have. Everyone else is now coming onto the soft compound of tyre at this point, meaning their car is going to be faster. Maybe uh, Mick Hazel is not confident that he can get to the end on that soft compound of tyre. But at this point, everyone else is going to be going quicker. They've got fresher tyres. We have we have to occupant out there on the slower compound of tyre, which are more importantly worn as well. So. I don't know, we'll see, but I really expect the Nissan to be in this lap. Yeah, that could potentially be very disastrous for Nissan, as you say. You can see the tyre strategy on the left-hand side of your screen there, racing soft. About five laps or so is the duration, so that's the perfect point now to be going on to them. So Nissan, they might have a bit more of an advantage because they're going to have fresher rubber than the other soft tyres around them at the end of the race. But still, is it going to be enough to overcome them? It won't be enough, I don't think, to overcome these guys. Mitsubishi nearly got a free pit stop in hand at the moment, Jimmy. They do have to fuel as well, of course. We'll have to wait and see. They will have a gap coming out of the pit stop because they led, of course, about 10 seconds or so before the pit stops uh, came around. Aston Martin are now the ones to watch. They're on the soft compound of the tyre. They're the lead runner to be on the soft compound of the tyre. And right now, they need to be going as quick as possible. So we have currently have for Aston Martin uh, Ima in the car. We've seen he's been quick in practice. Let's see if he can do the same uh, right now. In come our leaders, Mitsubishi. So one last driver swap for the current leaders. Going onto the hard compound of tyre. It's the slowest compound of tyre. We have quite a few laps left. So this is far from a done deal.
No, it certainly is. Let's see what happens. We're about to Nissan on the track at the moment. They're in second position, and they are just, by the looks of things, just coming out of turn number 10 at the moment. Let's see how things set as they go to the line. No, Nissan actually coming over the timing line, I apologise. So they do, oh, sorry, into the pit lane, rather, even. Oh, let's get that right. So Nissan into the pit lane, then going on to another compound of tyres. Mitsubishi being held here for a long time, of course, putting fuel in the car, making sure they've got enough juice to get them to the end. Because Al, meanwhile, is under in the cockpit now, into the wheel, behind the wheel of that Nissan from second position. Aston Martin go into the race lead for now. But in fact, that will be set to change. Over the line we go. You can see that there, Aston Martin will be nearly trying to take over at the front, but it's going to be very close with Mitsubishi coming out of the pit box. And there you go, Mitsubishi do have an advantage and they are back into that race lead, Jimmy. More importantly, that gap has come down from 10 seconds to five seconds after the pit stop. The Aston Martin is absolutely flying at this point, as we expected on that softer compound of tyres. So Mitsubishi are going to do all they can to try and defend. Now the Lexus actually comes out in front of the Nissan there after the stop again, busy the lap early. You can see that is the damage. So now we have Aston Martin, Porsche, Lexus, Nissan, Mercedes, BMW, Subaru, Renault and Honda all on the soft compound of tyre. And only one, uh, only one team opting for uh, hards at the end, and that is Mitsubishi. And you can see just how fast that gap is coming down. We're already down to 3.9 seconds. Mitsubishi are in trouble here. Yeah, big, big drama. Mitsubishi, of course, have got a lot to gain by finishing at the top of the order as well. They could potentially be set to be on the podium in the Manufacturer Series. If that gets turned on its head, well, they won't be. We might see the likes of Porsche or Toyota on the podium as well. And that could be the set to be in this race. Here we go then, through the right-hander, down towards the left-hander of turn number 10, Toyota, going very, very defensive indeed. Into the left-hander we go. Porsche on the outside. They go for the switchback. Are they going to get the traction? Yes, they are. Toyota lose out to Porsche. An absolutely blinding move there for Porsche. And Sugurara sound behind the wheel of that Porsche at the moment, doing an absolutely brilliant job to get himself onto the rostrum. It was really only a matter of time, I think, there. The car did not, not look as uh, agile there as uh, the Porsche, but a fantastic move there. You can see from a long time, the Toyota was a little bit too tight on that corner. As a result, just went a bit wide and allowed the Porsche through now. Gap's coming this... down, Jimmy, at the top, isn't it? 2.2 seconds it is. It was 3.9 at the start of this lap. Let's not forget, Mick Gazal, meanwhile, on the raggedy edge there in sixth position. The soft tyres on that Nissan, they've been all at sea, really, in this race, haven't they? Well, this is the chasing pack now at the moment. Now, they have, a, they have a, a choice. Do they fight amongst each other for the position immediate to them? Or do they work together and try and get up into that top three? It's going to be tricky, of course. Nissan are fighting for a potential win here. They need every place they can get. Mick Hazal at the wheel currently of the Nissan GTR Group 3 car. At the front of the field, Mitsubishi losing time hand over fist. The gap is now down to only 1.5 seconds. I think by the end of this lap, Aston Martin and Mitsubishi are going to be together. And Aston Martin right now, I think, Tom, looking like the third favourites to take this and the overall championship. Yeah, absolutely right there, Jimmy, as you say. And of course, let's not forget, if they do win, they will get that place in the world final in November. So it is all to play for here for Aston Martin, Mitsubishi. They're not competing for the overall win here tonight, but they are competing for a bit of glory here in this final race as well. But I don't think it's going to be possible. So their strategy, it looked good in the mid stages. They had a good advantage, but Aston Martin there on the soft tyre. No match at all is Mitsubishi at the moment. So a bit of a slip and a slide there from the Mitsubishi team. Aston Martin, though, those softer tyres gripping like a granny to a stopping trolley at the moment. I don't know where that one came from, <laughs> but I tell you what, <laughs> it is going absolutely brilliantly for Aston Martin so far. And let's not forget, it's uh, uh, Miami behind the wheel of that, the Japanese driver. So through the final corner and out of it now. This is going to be crucial time, Jimmy. This is surely going to be the race winning overtake for Aston Martin. Watch Aston Martin, the straight line there. It's fast and a straight line anyway. Now it's got the sit screen. Mitsubishi goes defensive, but it's not far enough over. Aston Martin, you cannot defend that sort of straight line speed. Through goes the Aston Martin there, up into the lead of the race. And right now, if it ended as is, Aston Martin would be your champions uh, of the World Tour of Paris. But in the background, this and Alexis now side by side. This and needs to make as many places as possible. Looking to the outside of Alexis, Nick Hazel holds it there. Bit of contact side by side, but he'll still be on the inside to the left and they are through a little bit rough between the two but Nissan now up into fifth position but he has a, he needs a miracle if he's going to catch Jota who are five seconds in front yeah absolutely right let's not forget less than two laps now remaining of this race here at the circuit of Barcelona Catalonia for the manufacturer series grand final and Nissan Mick Hazal behind the wheel nothing that he's going to be able to do surely to get himself in 
further up the order unless Toyota, Porsche, Mitsubishi, Aston Martin makes a mistake and a quite a crucial one at that. But let's see how things go. They are, of course, on the softer compound of tyre, Nissan, Toyota on the medium compound, but the pace differential isn't that great between the two. Not certainly enough that's going to be able to bring that gap down, but we'll keep an eye on it. We'll see how it goes, but this time is going to be running out. You can see Toyota there up in the far distance, just breaking down in towards turn number 10. Here, though, was the overtake. We can see Nissan, great drive out of the final corner, a bit of a bump even into the back of Nissan. Nissan going very defensive down the start finish straight. Mid Nissan, uh, sorry, Mid Lexus going defensive down the start finish straight. Side by side they come, down towards that first corner. And then a brilliant, brilliant overtake from Mick Hazal. Hard on the brakes, he went all the way around the outside. Had superior traction, superior drive. Lexus tried to keep them pretty honest into turn number two. But Mick Hazal, well, he doesn't know how to hold a car on its racing line. And that was proof of that. Very good stuff. So here is the Aston Martin now looking back. We have the Mitsubishi in the background. They are falling back into the clutches of the Porsche. Only 1.9 seconds now between Porsche and the Mitsubishi in second place. I'd like to apologise as well. I said that uh, the Manufacturer Series wins a prize, uh, wins the place in the uh, World Final later on this year. I do apologise, that's not the case. It's only the Nations Cup that wins a place in the World Final. Glad we cleared that up before the end of that one. It could have been quite interesting. Meanwhile, these guys here then, Jimmy, well, what can you say about them? They just caught the strategy to perfection. They've had great pace, and they are doing an absolutely brilliant job here to uh, command the lead at the moment. Definitely, but we know from experience that we can't call this race until we've gone past the chequered flag. Mitsubishi still falling back to Porsche. Porsche on this far superior tyre compound, just driving up to the back there of the red machine in front. You can see just how much the... Uh, as the Mitsubishi driver is struggling to get the, the power down there. The rear wheels, the rear tyres, uh, whilst they will last for a long time, there's not much grip there. And the gap now down to only half a second. Slipstream now coming down to the hairpin, not close enough to make a move here. And the thing is, I wonder if the Porsche is actually gaining on the Aston Martin. Well, I think it might be at this point. So here comes the Porsche up the hill. He needs to dispatch this Mitsubishi as quick as possible if he has any hope of catching the Aston Martin driver at the top of the field. Well, brilliant, brilliant start from Porsche here. Great driving as they come down through this third sector, through into the right. They're going to flick it left and flick it right for the penultimate time. And over the timing line they will come, and surely this is where we'll see the Porsche getting good traction. You can see the Mitsubishi struggling with its tyres. Harder compounds, no grip at all compared to the soft compound Porsche. Out of the final corner we go, over the line. Mitsubishi go defensive, but surely it's going to be all in vain as we come down the start finish straight for the penultimate time of asking. Side by side we go, and Porsche move up into second position at the very end on the final lap of this race. Brilliant, brilliant driving from Porsche. Great stuff from Sugarara-san, who is the driver behind the wheel of that car. And the Mitsubishi with Avancino behind the wheel, sadly missing out and dropping down to third position. That's right, the moment. I think that might be the last. I think it'll be too much to ask for Toyota to catch Mitsubishi, but we might see Nissan catch Toyota if there is a mistake from Toyota, but right now looking very strong for Aston Martin. And just a reminder, Aston Martin started the pre-qualifying for this event down in 10th position. This goes to show the qualifying definitely is not everything. No, absolutely not. Some great strategy, some great pace from behind the wheel of that Aston Martin. And of course, good straight line speed certainly does help along that uh, start finish straight here at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. So here at BMW, well, their weekend started off very, very strongly indeed. Let's not forget with that win at Brands Hatch. But after that, it went downhill pretty quickly, unfortunately. Mercedes-Benz, meanwhile, just in front. Well, we haven't really heard that much from them over the course of this one. It's been a bit of a quiet time for them here tonight in Paris, and it's not going to be anything to write home about with seventh position at the chequered flag here either. No, a bit of an aggressive move for them earlier on in the race, but more importantly, let's head to the front of the field because right now Aston Martin are coming in to the last section of the circuit. Only a couple of corners separate them and the, the win here, the Paris World Tour. Here we are, one more right, one more left, and then through the last corner, Aston Martin. Out, nobody thought these guys would be coming away with the victory, but they come round the last corner right now. Drive to the line, Aston Martin are your champions here at Paris. What an absolutely fantastic result for them. Porsche will come home in second with Mitsubishi third. But Aston Martin, the true underdog story, you couldn't ask for a better story as a commentator, Tom. No, that was absolutely fantastic from Aston Martin. Yoshihori Arai, the driver behind the wheel, am I rather, I should say, takes victory. The softer tyres proving to be very, very beneficial for them. A great strategy call. Renault, meanwhile, come home. Sick as Paris down there in 11th position. And Honda, not something to write home about for them either. Down in 12th place. Over the line come Honda to complete the top 12 teams. Three 
drivers in each team, three different compounds of tyres, and Aston Martin called that strategy to absolute perfection. A brilliant, brilliant race for all of those guys involved. Complete underdogs, as you say there, Jimmy. Going into that one, starting down in 10th position to the chequered flag they went, and that was absolutely fantastic. Tell you what, I can't help but smile, Tom. It's, it's always great to see people who I think uh, maybe didn't come into this event thinking they had the chance of winning, to see them do so well, and then in the end, just great strategy call. And there they were. They were always there when it needs to be. We saw a couple of mistakes, I think, from Nissan. Uh, I say, unfortunately, for Nissan, um, they, I think their attempt ended when they were shoveled off the circuit mid-race. I mean, yeah, they, had a, they had a real chance of coming away with this, but uh, that's racing. Yeah, their pace had been very good up until that point, as you say, Jimmy. And, well, as you say, that is, as we mentioned earlier on, the luck element does come into racing. You've certainly got to be in the right place at the wrong time. Sadly for Nissan at that point, wrong place, wrong time. And the result was, of course, them going off the circuit and uh, that compromising their race. I always like to say you make your own luck in racing, but mm. so sometimes, uh, <laughs> sometimes that isn't quite true. <laughs> <laughs> no, it certainly isn't. Well, absolutely brilliant stuff indeed for all involved. Those top three, of course, as we saw in the different manufacturers, we'll be crowning them onto the podium very, very shortly as well. We'll be having Lucas Ordonez coming up and joining us very, very soon there as well. Meanwhile, let's go over to Julia, who is with uh, Aston Martin. Winners, the top three are over there. I'm here with the winners of the final race there, uh, Aston Martin, guys, how are you doing? Speechless, uh, yeah. first time here, I did not expect this. Uh, great drivers and uh, crew chief right here, awesome. Oh, everyone looks really like sweaty and on edge, Owen. <laughs> and um, obviously in that final race, you know, you came all the way from the, from the back of the pack there. I mean, how do, you, how do you keep your cool? Because also it's kind of keeping your cool and not letting your teammates down and just, there's a lot of things to kind of take on board. Honestly, I was more nervous watching the last few laps of his stint yeah. than I was for my driving. Really? Yeah, yeah, really? definitely, definitely. How do, how do you feel? I, I, when driving, actually, I wasn't nervous. I was, more, I was nervous in my first race, um, but that went really well. Got from seventh to second. Um, gave him a good platform for the next race and managed to hold him to second. And then we just, no mistakes. Again, same as Monaco, no mistakes. Yeah. You're super out of breath. How do you feel? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. It's like a dream. A dream. It's amazing. Wow, guys, you've done so, so incredibly well. Oh, I think I'd like I'm out of breath now just watching these guys. It seems very, very intense. And we're going to chuck it over to Tom and Jimmy. Yeah, thank you very much indeed there, Julia. Not just Tom and Jimmy, but also Lucas Ordonez has joined us in the commentary box. Lucas, I'll tell you what, we've just called that race. Brilliant it was. How was it for you? Well, uh, it was incredible to watch. Uh, obviously, the, the strategy was key, key in, the, in this race. Uh, and, uh, you know, we could see drama when, when we could see Igor Fraga struggling with that uh, in the middle of, uh, of the group in, in the stadium of Circuit of Barcelona, uh, struggling, you know, being on the gravel. And then uh, we could see also problems in, during the pit stop for Renault. Uh, they, they had to stop uh, again uh, because they choose uh, again the hard tires. So uh, a lot of drama, but a, lo a lot of consistency also for other teams. Uh, also great to see uh, Mitsubishi doing a, a nice uh, try with a, with, a, with a soft compound at the beginning. And yeah, it was fun. Yeah, very, very fun indeed, as you say there, Lucas. So we've got some replays here as well. What was your particular highlight of the race? This was early on, where we saw Mitsubishi on the softer tires at the start, getting the better of Aston Martin. Yeah, this is uh, the highlight, no? When Igor Fraga was uh, really pushing to, to progress with the Nissan, then he got into, into a big trouble uh, with this massive group. And uh, he got uh, kicked uh, from, from the Renault here. And, and uh, yeah, that was the, the key for, for the race, no? To, to make uh, things easier for Mitsubishi and uh, for sure for Aston. Yeah, absolutely brilliant stuff. Well, these were in the mid stages of the race. This is where we saw Nissan really struggling as well. Mercedes Benz getting the better of them as they did a bit of a biff into the back of the Chevrolet Corvette there out in front. And to be honest with you, I thought that Mitsubishi's strategy in the early stages looked pretty good. They had a great advantage. As soon as they got onto those hard tyres, though, they were toast, weren't they? Yeah, that's the, the, the key, no? If you choose a risky uh, strategy like choosing the soft tyres at the beginning, you get the advantage to get rid of the, the traffic and uh, more risky situations, but uh, you really have to, you know, to progress a lot and to make a lot, of, to make a massive gap to, to defend at the end of the race with the hard tires. Uh, at the end, uh, uh, unfortunately for Mitsubishi, they, they have not the, the enough gap to, to defend from Aston. 
So uh, yeah, Aston showed uh, incredible pace uh, through the the, the whole uh, night and and uh, well deserved victory for them. Yeah, absolutely right. This was Aston Martin coming over the line to take that checkered flag just under two seconds ahead of Porsche. We've got it in turn, got ahead of Mitsubishi on the final lap for that one as well. You can see the jubilation on all of the team's faces there. Yoshihiro Amai, the driver who took the checkered flag for the team there. And what a brilliant race it was, Jimmy. I'll tell you what, Lucas, let's put you on the spot, shall we? Sum up your top three moments, one word for each. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't know, don't know. It's, uh, you know, uh, As Aston. <laughs> I, I, I've got my fingers and toes out here. Like. <laughs> it seems a bit, uh, a bit uh, cruel to do that to a non-native English speaker, doesn't it? <laughs> Incredible, exciting, amazing, probably is the best way of putting exactly. it. Exactly. No, no, yeah, really, we'll that, really <laughs> hard to describe, but uh, as always, manufacturer series is uh, exciting. Uh, mm. The tyre strategy, the fuel consumption management is is key point, and, and the difference between the manufacturers and the drivers as well to put, you know, the fastest driver at the end or at the beginning makes a huge difference. So, so it's always exciting, and uh, what a show for the first uh, World Tour. Exactly. That's Absolutely fantastic. Well, let's have a look at some race standings then after that one. See who lined up where, of course, just to give you a bit of a reminder. It was Aston Martin who took the win ahead of Porsche and Mitsubishi on the podium. Team Toyota, not a bad effort from them. Nissan also inside the top five there as well. Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, and you saw further down the order. But the final points rankings, Jimmy, Aston Martin on top. Yeah, Aston Martin top, Nissan second, Porsche third. There is your podium. BMW, who looked oh so strong at the start of the event, down to fourth. Toyota, a decent recovery after a poor start into fifth, and Mitsubishi sixth. Mercedes, Ben seventh, Lexus eighth, Subaru ninth, Renault tenth, Honda eleventh, and Chevy. Torrid time, 12th place. Yeah, absolutely right. Not something to write home about for them in any way, shape or form. Anyway, let's go over and have a look at some highlights of Team Radio. Lucas, we'll get your thoughts on this in just a couple of moments' time because, well, it was probably an interesting affair over the airwaves. I will do my best to get by Renault. They're coming fast. Mitsubishi? Yep, soft tyres. All right, I won't fight them too much. Got Lexus. Nice one, huh? I'm watching you. So, Nico, Nico, yes. hammer, hammer time. Okay, let's go, let's go. Can you tell me the gap from Lexus to the Porsche guy, please? It's 7.5 seconds. What tires do they have? Uh, soft. Oh, that sucks. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you can't... You really can't help but smile after watching that one, can you? That was absolutely fantastic. Oh, you've been in a position of where you've had to be celebrating, talking over team radio. What do you think about that? Well, it's really, really cool. It's uh, new, new stuff for, for uh, Gran Turismo this year, and I think it's, it will be really fantastic for the show, for the viewers. And no, no, I have, you know, goosebumps at the moment <laughs> because it's really, you really feel like in a real race car and uh, the communication is key in, in, in motorsport. And, and it's, it's great to show the, the you know, the, the, the feelings and, uh, and, and their comments and when they are happy or when they are upset about themselves. Yeah. Uh, annoyingly, you kind of stole my question. I was, I was going to say that the, uh, it's very similar to what you do in a real-life race car. Of course, if you don't know, Lucas, real-life racing driver is all right. It's okay. You know. <laughs> um, do you find yourself saying similar things when you're in, in the real car compared to what we see here? Yeah, absolutely. No, and it's just the beginning. We have seen a few uh, moments, but uh, I think uh, this year looks promising. Uh, uh, you know, we will see uh, reactions like in real life. No, it's it's through moments, uh, through the pit stops. Language and, is and probably a bit more blue though in your car, surely. <laughs> <isn't it>? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Lucas, anyway, sorry, we're going to have to cut you short there. We're going to go over to the podium. So thank you very much. Let's have a look and see our top three finishers in the Manufacturer Series. <laughs> and over to our... And over to our third place finishers then, it is Porsche. <laughs> and in second position for the Manufacturer Series here tonight in Paris, our second place finishers are Nissan.
And our winners for the Manufacturer Series here tonight in Paris, it is Team Aston Martin! And now then, it is time for the National Anthem. And now it is time for our third place trophy to be presented to the finishers of third place. Richard Brumwald, Communications Director for PlayStation France. <laughs> our second place finishers. Team Nissan, Stefan Palestre presents the trophy. He's the head of the brand of the FIA. And now, and now it is time for the watches for the winning team. On behalf of Tag Heuer, the official timing partner for GT Sport, presented by sports partnership for Tag Heuer, Olivier Valeri. And the first place trophy presented to our winning team for the Manufacturer Series of Aston Martin. It is Kazunori Yamauchi, the producer of the Gran Turismo Series. <laughs> and these are your top three finishers in World Tour 1 in Paris for the 2019 FIA Gran Turismo Championships in the Manufacturer Series. Wow, there we have it. Yes, Aston Martin, our Manufacturer Series champions. Honestly, I mean, We've talked a lot, obviously, like over the course of this uh, entire series about, you know, the kind of ones to watch and the ones to look out for. And we didn't mention them at all, did we? That, that's what we get for being, uh, <laughs> for, <laughs> for not being fair. But uh, I mean, I think a very popular winner, I think, today. And great to see a Tom back on the podium. He was there back at the uh, original World Tour in the And great to see him back up there again. Yeah, so how come, why didn't we call it? What, what did they do that set them apart? I think more than anything, it was just their, really, they kept themselves quiet. They kept their nose clean for the vast majority of it. And their strategy, really, more than anything, especially in that last race, it was just incredible. They were over to overhaul Mitsubishi right at the very end of that one. And that was when it counted. Those double points really helped them out. We did have that conversation earlier this morning uh, about Lexus winning last time and about the different sort of uh, mishaps that happen for other teams and is that the sort of crux of how it works but it kind of proves again that it is just keep to 
just don't make any mistakes and then hopefully other people will make mistakes and then that's that's a strategy. I mean, it's a yeah. strategy, right? It's my strategy. You is know, it? I, I, I'm, I'm pretty slow at home. If, <laughs> yeah. I don't, if I don't go off, you tend to pick up some positions, but uh, that's how you got to do it. It's a team event that was over the course of several races. Being one, uh, being fast once is not going to be enough. And it goes back to that old saying, doesn't it? To finish first, first you must finish. There you go. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back with more tomorrow from the Nations Cup. Don't go anywhere. See you tomorrow. Lovely.